pull it. Like, if you buy something from somebody on Craigslist, are you going to go do a background check on the VCR that you're no, buying for you 10 can't. bucks? Or you from can't, the no. pawn shop, even. It's it's uh, it's most. I think most of the people who end up with stolen product don't know that it is right. stolen. So uh, you know, like nothing on the rap sheet was something that carries a death penalty. So they they're trying to say like, here's his rap sheet. Therefore, he deserved to die. No, no, no he did not. Nothing he did. No victims. had a victim. And even if it did, nothing he did brings a death penalty. So according to the report, the van transporting Freddie Gray, the 25-year-old black man who suffered a serious spine injury while in police custody and later died, made one more stop than previously thought. That 40 minutes that Gray spent in the van alone was the center of the independent investigation. According to uh, NPR, quote, that extra stop was discovered through the review of recordings made by security and private cameras. Deputy Police Commissioner Kevin Davis said he added that another detainee who was riding the van told police that Gray was still moving around, kicking and making noises until the van reached the police station. That second detainee rode in the police van on the other side of a metal partition that divides its cargo space. When he was picked up, Gray was already in the van. More about this report and what are the police saying in response? It's Free Talk Live back to the my bags and saying you cost me a lot of misery and all total twenty seven hundred dollars in doggy fees and all it took was one container of dynamite two pounds three ounces and my dog has been cured abby's a five-year-old silky terrier she had like chicken pox on her belly clusters of bumps on her back and she was allergic to like 70 some odd things so the dermatologist it was like, oh yeah just keep giving her needles every 10 days but she's not clearing up and then I, it came up on my radio dynavite d-i-n-o-v-i-t-e dot com 859-428-1000. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks. And one morning there was nothing there. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky. It turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. Go. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and 
you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want, whether you want to talk about what's happening in Baltimore or anything that happens to be on your mind. Just uh, take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. Joining you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And Danica, today was your first time ever trying Sherry's Berries. Oh, and they were so delightful. Were they everything that we made them out to be? Oh, and more. They are excellent. And, and I only had one. Well, you don't have to have just one, right? Well, I mean, there's like, there's three different kinds there. Yes, you should have thought. all of them. Because... Oh, I intend to. Okay, good. I'm just, I'm savoring Which because... one did you choose? What was your first pick? Uh, it was the white with, um, the white chocolate. The white, white chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> there they are. It's, it's, it's for, a good part, right? For me, it's a toss up, uh, <laughs> between the white chocolate and the, the dark chocolate. I, I'm not sure which one's my favorite. Because... I'm not a fan of dark chocolate. I know, and I think that's just so weird. I love dark chocolate. Well, I'm also on a diet, so more for the both of you. Hey, dark chocolate's good for you. (laughs) But I don't like dark chocolate. Well, you're just weird. Well, uh, the dark chocolate ones are covered with chocolate chips, which really I think is a nice texture. Are those also dark chocolate? Yes. And then also the the white chocolate ones that you had are, mm-hmm. uh, is just, that's got the swizzle on it. And then there's also the uh, the milk chocolate, which has nuts yes. uh, on it as a covering. Sherry's Berries is an awesome gift, whether it's for Mother's Day, which is coming up, and that's the reason why we're telling you about Sherry's Berries, but or for any old time, uh, for anybody that Graduation. you care about. Whatever. Yeah. Birthdays. Grandma's you know, birthday. Just because you want some, whatever the reason, go and get Sherry's Berries. Use code FTL to get over 40% savings. These giant, delicious, freshly dipped strawberries start at just $19.99. But if you go for $10 more, you can double the amount of berries. So what we got is the double order uh, here, Danica, that you'll be taking home uh, and sharing with Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, If you can avoid eating all of them in one sitting, because they are so good. I will do my absolute best, but I make no guarantees. Now, for whatever reason, if mom isn't interested in berries, she's a little strange, perhaps, uh, we've got uh, also, you know, things like cake truffles, brownie pops, pretzels. So you can get other things from Sherry's Berries as well. But I highly recommend these berries. They're awesome. And again, you can double your order uh, size for just $10 more. Go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. You really can't go wrong with this gift for Mother's Day. And uh, I think that uh, she'll be very happy. And if, if she loves you enough, she'll let you have some of them too. So <laughs> berries.com, go get them and use code FTL to get the deals at berries.com as we go to Zach in Chicago. More on the Baltimore situation coming up uh, with the police being charged now ostensibly with murder, according to the state's attorney. Zach, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Zach. Hi. Hey, we got you. Go ahead. All right, so I wanted to talk about um, something that I know Chris Cantwell. Zach, uh, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to buggy. Can you uh, back off your phone by like an inch or, or two? You're a little loud. Uh, is that any better? That's better, oh, much, much better. better. Thank you. Yeah, you're... <laughs> sorry, I didn't speak your phone. Ah, that'll do it. Um, I know Chris Cantwell brought this up a few times about how kind of talking about you know rioting isn't necessarily the answer, but it's not. Um, not the answer. So, um, well, what do you believe? I don't want to hear what Chris Cantwell believes. What does Zach Zach think? I was going to expand upon that. I think that historically, if you look at any kind of large social change or, um, economic change, it's always surrounded by violence. So if you start with like the French revolution, the American revolution, there's a war around it. And uh, even, like, going back in the U.S. history, you have, like, the race riots back that happened in, um, uh, like, Malcolm X, uh, uh, one that happened in L.A., uh, whenever you were having the 
um, what was it called? I can't remember the name of the riot that happened in L.A. Um, After yeah, the no. Rodney King thing? Uh, no, before that. Um, hmm. I can't remember what it was called. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, so my, my argument is that violence is kind of required for this kind of social change. And I think right now people are starting to realize that police, or at least like police controlled by the state, isn't really the answer for your protection problem. All right, and Zach, hold on. I, I've, I've got a question for you. You're saying that you think that, and may, maybe I'm you know mishearing what you're saying, but it sounds as though you're saying that all rioting is good because it brings about social change. No, no, no. I don't, I don't believe that. I think that whenever people riot and like, okay, so my biggest problem with the rioting that's going on in uh, Baltimore is that they're hurting innocent people. Like, you know, they're burning down. That's what PBS happens in riots. Starbucks. Uh, yeah, there, there's casualties. I just, I wish people would kind of censor their violence towards the state itself. Like instead of burning down a CVS, burn down a police station. That's, that's what I think that if pe- people are angry and there's a lot of hooligans are out there causing trouble in general, but I think that, I, what I'm trying to say is I think that violence is necessary for a big social change and that the social change we're starting to see is people having a changed view of the police. And I think that if we're going to see the the state-controlled police ousted, that you're going to have to have a level of violence surrounding that change. I don't think you can have it peacefully. Now, there's one thing that I would agree with you on, but I disagree with your premise. I, I will agree that historically when there's you know major social change for the most part there is violence that is associated with that but gandhi proved that you can have social change without violence well so did martin luther king but i think what zach is saying is that at along the same time frame as those peaceful activists were active there were violent activists oh, sure, yeah. who were also active exactly. and i think that you can make those observations and that's true but i don't know that that means that it has to be that way that because violence has been used in the past right means correlation that well it's also correlation does not equal causation that's true and too. there's a website I, I forget the url for it but it's a brilliant website that shows you a bunch of different things that correlate on charts but there's absolutely no connection between them. Like the suicide rate in one place with the price of milk somewhere else and how those either go up or down at the same rate, but they're in no way connected to one another. Okay. I, I just see that. I just, I do think though that in, in this situation that, that the violent activists and the violent actions that are going on at the same time with peaceful activists are in correlation. You know, you had Malcolm X as the the violent counterpart of Martin Luther King, and I think you could you could make arguments that some of the violent um, things that happened during the uh, um, during the uh, the equality movement that went on back then did, had more of an effect than the peaceful protests. But I think well, the back then protests, you also I had the KKK elements. burning down people's houses and lighting crosses on fire in their yards. I, I would not say that that brought about social change. I would say that the white business owners that defied state law and said, yes, I will serve black people at my lunch counter. Those people had more impact on mm. social change. Absolutely, Zach, thanks for the call and the thoughts. I do appreciate it. Look, uh, there's no doubt violence is going to occur. I mean, because we don't get to control others, right? And other people aren't necessarily to the point where they understand that peace is the way. I think all that we can really do is control our own selves and do our best to influence others to be as peaceful as possible. I don't think that because violence has happened in the past means that it has to continue in the future. Uh, I think peace is the best way to achieve peace, and I think that ultimately if you embrace violence as your means, that you will find that you won't achieve peace because, you know, the means ultimately becomes the ends. But share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Hi, this is Dr. Joel Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy. Have you ever wondered why farmers can keep their livestock lean and healthy just by feeding them minerals in a nutrient-dense diet? Before market, they cut off their minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains to fatten them up. So if weight control is this easy, why does the medical system prescribe invasive surgical gastric bypass for humans? The truth be told, according to research, you can avoid over 900 different diseases just by getting 90 essential nutrients daily. Check us out on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com. 
and order your Healthy Start Pack and get your 90 for life. Or dial 855-301-TEAM. I said essential, not optional, and every day. Easy. 90 for life on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com or call 855-301-TEAM. That's 855-301-TEAM. That's 855-301-TEAM. Check us out on the web at sonsoflibertyteam.com at sonsoflibertyteam.com. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge, at marketfreetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. And I use the downsizedc.org yeah. uh, system for responding to my Congress critters and talking to, right. the, to the thieves and liars and despots in, in Washington, D.C. And in these letters, they outline the issue for me. And then they flush it down the toilet. And it's so demeaning. Yeah. They just don't care what I think. I can tell them, you know, like... He'll oh, pretend like he cares if he's trying to get elected. They only care what you think if you're giving them a check with, you know, five digits on mm. it. Then you might be able to get them to do something. Yeah. But that's just one senator among the 535 <laughs> disgusting, dishonorable thieves. What's a guy to do? These lobbying groups, they run Washington. Washington has been taken over. It does not belong to the American people. It doesn't do anything for the American people. It is a bad, bad place. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE is the number. 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you with you in studio. You've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And also, if you get online at all, whether it's on your smartphone, laptop, desktop, work computer, you probably should look at ProXPN as a way to help protect yourself against people that want to know what you're doing online. People that want to even lift your information, like your passwords, bank account information. There are criminals out there who would like to sniff your Wi-Fi packets to reveal that information. Plus, your internet service providers probably logging all of the websites you visit and maybe even keeping those logs for several years in some cases. Of course, they'll turn them over to advertising companies, the government. You can stop that from happening by using ProXPN. It's a virtual private network, and they're global. They encrypt your data connection so those people cannot uh, pry and spy on you anymore. You can go and get started for free right now 
over at proxpn.com slash FTL. You download their free software and get rolling. Now, the free account obviously has some limitations on it, like you don't get unlimited bandwidth with a free account. If you want to get the unlimited bandwidth, you can upgrade to their premium account. And premium also means you get servers around the world that you can connect to. The free account, you only get one. Uh, and you can privately torrent with the premium account. You can get past regionally blocked websites. So if you've ever been to one of those websites where it says, we're sorry, we can't show this video to you because you're in the United States. Uh, like every show on the BBC's website. <laughs> so what you do is... You A would bunch then, of things on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You would then connect to one of their servers that is not in the United States. And that should probably solve your problem. So ProXPN can help you in a lot of different ways. Protect your privacy and give you more internet basically uh, than you would otherwise receive so go to proxpn.com slash ftl when you're ready to upgrade to premium use code ftl 50 ftl like free talk live 50 as in 50 percent off the price of the annual account which by the way locks in that price for the lifetime of your account so when you're ready for year number two you get the same great deal by using code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose but your privacy, so why wait? Go to proxpn.com slash FTL tonight and use promo code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. The news out of Baltimore is that charges are being brought, and apparently there are celebrations now in the streets. Uh, from what I'm reading over at DrudgeReport.com. But the story here is from TheFreeThoughtProject.com, where the state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, has released results of her office's what she calls a thorough and independent investigation, as well as the medical examiner's report bringing multiple charges against several officers involved in the arrest. You said six officers, Daryl. Is that right? That's what I had heard. Yeah, I heard six as well. Uh, so according to the report, there's a there was this other prisoner in the back of the van for one portion of the ride. His name is Donta Allen. He's 22. And as they reported over at thefreethoughtproject.com, uh, police leaked a document claiming that Allen told them that Gray inflicted injuries upon himself. However, on Thursday after Allen was released, he told reporters that he never said Freddie Gray was beating himself up in the back of the van. So... You got the police saying one thing about what this guy, who is the closest thing to a witness of what happened to Freddie Gray, of one thing that he said, the police are saying he was beating himself up. Now he's saying, uh-uh, I didn't say that. According to the report, Baltimore's chief prosecutor broke down a detailed account of Gray's arrest and mistreatment while in police custody. There were, quote, numerous occasions on which Gray was not properly restrained with a seatbelt while he rode in the back of the police van. The release of this report actually finds... The police guilty, or the release of this report, that actually finds the police guilty, is encouraging. All too often we see police officers kill unarmed, compliant, and innocent men on video, and they never see the inside of a courtroom. While the charges and arrest warrants are refreshing, it doesn't mean the officers involved will be convicted of a crime. While charging cops with murder is incredibly rare, convicting them of it is even more uncommon. And one thing's for sure, the Fraternal Order of Police, the police unions are not so happy about this. Another story that's related here from the Baltimore Sun, where having heard about these charges from the state's attorney, the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge in the area is uh, asking the state's attorney to appoint a special prosecutor because of her personal connection to the Gray's family attorney. Oh, what? And her marriage to a city councilman. So they're asking for Mosby, the... Uh, state's attorney to essentially resign herself from the case. So it's okay for the police to ask the prosecutor to recuse themselves because of connections, but you can't ask the prosecutor to recuse themselves because, because they're, they're paid for oh by taxpayer gosh. funds. They work for the same people as the police and the judge, and in most cases, the prosecutor works for the police department. That's correct. The letter from Gene Ryan, president of the Fraternal Order Police Lodge Number 3, also states that none of the six officers involved in Gray's arrest and death were responsible for the 25-year-old West Baltimore man's death that spurred protests and unrest, including rioting and looting on Monday. The letter was released just minutes before Mosby announced charges against the officers. The letter states, quote, not one of the officers involved in this tragic situation left home in the morning with the anticipation that someone with whom they interacted would not go home that night. As tragic as this situation is, none of the officers involved are responsible for the death of Mr. Gray. Hold on. So he, he's using a fallacy 
of they did not intend to kill anybody when they woke up, so therefore they couldn't have killed somebody. There's no way they could be <laughs> Like that That's a complete fallacy. Yeah. Just because <laughs> I did not intend to do a certain thing doesn't mean that I did not do a certain thing. And therefore had to face consequences. Yeah, how me. does the uh, p- boss man of the Fraternal Order of Police know one thing about what happened Fraternal in the back of that Order van? Of police. He, he doesn't. He doesn't know anything. He's being paid by their union dollars right. to make sure that he only says good things about them. Ryan requests Mosby appoint a special independent prosecutor. The letter states, quote, I have very deep concerns about the many conflicts of interest presented by your office conducting an investigation in this case. These conflicts include your personal and professional relations with the Gray family attorney, William Murphy, and the lead prosecutor's connections with members of the local media. Based on several nationally televised interviews, these reporters are likely to be witnesses in any potential litigation regarding this incident. Murphy supported Mosby during her campaign last year, however, and, or excuse me, Murphy's the attorney, I apologize. He donated $5,000 to her campaign and served on her transition committee. I wish we got to vote for the prosecutors in New Hampshire. Just, oh, that happens in some places, huh? Yes. It just said that the one person donated to the prosecutor's campaign. In a statement to the Baltimore Sun, the attorney uh, said the Gray case doesn't pose any conflicts for her, and the police union donated to other candidates in the election to be the state's attorney. State's attorney Marilyn Mosby has been elected by the residents in Baltimore City to uphold the law in every neighborhood, including her own, regardless of its uh, of if her husband is the councilman within the district where the numerous crimes occur says the spokeswoman. Hundreds of people donated to her campaign. There's no conflict of interest surrounding Billy Murphy. He's representing the family in a civil case, which has nothing to do with the criminal case. I mean, in a place like New Hampshire, by the way, every attorney knows every other attorney. Right. This is such a small place. The attorneys know the attorneys. The attorneys know the judges because most of the judges are also attorneys. You know, they have private practices alongside being judges. So, I mean, the idea that just because... The state's attorney knows another attorney means that there's a conflict of interest is ridiculous. And you're also married to a city councilor, so therefore uh, conflict of interest. Yeah, they're really scraping here trying to find something to uh, some sort of wrench to throw into. You ate at a restaurant that Freddie Gray ate at one time, so therefore conflict of interest. The letter says... Uh, that it has problems with Mosby's marriage to the city councilman, Nick Mosby. Quote, most importantly, it is clear that your husband's political future will be directly impacted for better or worse by the outcome of your investigation, says the letter. Oh, my gosh. In order to avoid any appearance of impropriety or a violation of the professional rules of professional responsibility, I ask that you appoint a special prosecutor to determine whether or not any charges should be filed. Well... This letter came out before the charges, so I guess it's a little late for that because the charges yeah. are being filed. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. When we come back, Daryl, you've got a quote that you want to share, but you don't want to reveal who said it. Not until after I give the quote. All right, we'll get to that quote. You see, it's related to this. Yes. Uh, 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here, whether it's on Baltimore or whatever's on your mind. Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose-to-nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck, 
or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. We're back with more Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE is the number you may take control of the airwaves here. Bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Coming up, somebody in the UK has decided that Minecraft, which is an incredibly popular video game, one, uh, one that Danica is a player of, yes. that Minecraft is bad for children. Now, so bad. I want to hear more about this because my understanding, Minecraft is like one of the least violent games you can possibly play. I mean, uh, and then one of the most creative. Yes. Too. So uh, I want to know more. Creativity about that. is bad for children because it causes them to use their brains and so then is not on the listen bus, apparently. to you know what their elders tell them because <laughs> elected officials know better. I don't know if it's an elected official who wrote the who wrote the piece, but we'll get in we'll get into it yeah, here in, in a little bit. Um, but also, Daryl, you've got something you wanted to share about. Uh, a, a quote. Uh, I don't know if it's a famous quote, but it is a quote by a famous person. Yes. Go uh, ahead with that. Do, do you want to... No, go for it. Okay, so the quote here, I, I feel as though it's very relevant to what's going on in not just Baltimore, but also Philly and New York City and Ferguson and pretty much everywhere else in the country where there's these protests slash riots. The quote here begins, Now, I wanted to say something about the fact that we have lived these last two or three summers with agony, and we have seen our cities going up in flames. 
And I would be the first to say that I am still committed to militant, powerful, massive nonviolence as the most potent weapon in grappling with the problem from a direct action point of view. I'm absolutely convinced that a riot merely intensifies the fear of the white community while relieving the guilt. And I feel we must always work with an effective, powerful weapon and method that brings about tangible results. But it's not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without, at the same time, condemning the contingent intolerable conditions that exist in our society. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel that they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellions to get attention. Mm. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is America failed to hear? It has failed to hear the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last 12 or 15 years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and, and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity. It's a good one. Martin Luther King. Very appropriate. Yes. Extremely. You can share your thoughts here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So um, your thoughts on that quote, Daryl? Why so relevant? Well, it, it should be obvious why it's relevant. The people that are protesting and rioting, not, not the people that are protesting, the people that are rioting, the people that are you know, vandalizing private property, they're trying to get a message out, but the message isn't being heard because it's not being relayed in a manner in which people can actually understand. Do you think somebody who goes and smashes a storefront window is actually trying to get a message out? Or is that just somebody who's just mad and they just want to go and destroy things? It could be both. I was going to say, yeah. It could, it, be, it both. could be both. But th there are some people that they're just so frustrated they don't know how to verbalize their frustration. So, right. the glass... so it comes out in throwing things through windows, through flipping over cars. It's through... like a punching bag or something. What's that? It's a more violent version of punching a bag. Yes. It's a much more violent and more visual version. Because if you just go into the gym and you, you know, hit a punching bag, then nobody's seeing you you know, lash out your anger. Yeah, but uh, what that's not true necessarily, but go on. Ian. But what percentage of the people who are doing destruction are actually out there because of frustration about the police versus those who just want to go and steal some crap from a local store? That I don't know because right. I've not done surveys of the people that are rioting. I, I didn't expect you to have an answer, but, uh, you know, that's my question is I don't really know. I feel like I feel like in the streets there's a portion of the people who are there for legitimate protest reasons. Right. And then there's a portion of them who are there because this is the time for anarchy or whatever. And then they don't really care about the reasons why. They just know there are hundreds of people in the streets and that if they put a mask on, they can be relatively anonymous. Right. And, uh, you know, get away with destruction of other people's property. I think there are certain people who are just using it as an opportunity more so than in, than trying to get certainly. a message out. There, there yeah. certainly are. And there's, I suspect it's the majority of There's of certainly the, people that are provocateurs that are infiltrating the crowds. Well, then there's that And too. trying to encourage. So you, you could have a situation to where somebody is out there, you know, legitimately wanting to protest, and then they get peer pressured into, yeah, that's, you know, throwing that's something through throwing a window. Something, breaking something. Or, sure. you know, flipping over a car or whatever. But at least with the riots and protests that are happening here and what happened in Ferguson and in parts of New York City, there's a much clearer message than some of the riots that I've seen. And I, I actually saw a funny story somebody had shared on Facebook. It was stupid stuff that white people riot over. Oh, yeah. pumpkins. I, so, pumpkins. Yeah, pumpkin was number uh, one. Was. My, my football number team one. won a championship, so I'm now going to go burn stuff in the middle of the street. Oh. Uh, basketball team wins or loses. Like, that. that's the thing that makes no sense to me. Like, you know, I never understood. We're going it. to riot because we've won the championship. Right. We're going to riot Let's because we've lost. Our town. <laughs>
you know, those things have there. There's no message trying to be set. Mm-hmm. At least with the Baltimore riots, there's you know the semblance of a message trying to be put out, but people don't really know how to verbalize that message. Right. Well, it gets it gets lost in uh, in the distractions of uh, of all the destruction, and unfortunately, there. I, you know, I, I I can't say I, that there isn't someone with the, um, I guess, the influence of Martin Luther King. I don't know because I don't live in Baltimore. Maybe there is the equivalent of, you know, whoever today's MLK would be for Baltimore who's out there trying to, you know, keep people calm. Uh, so far, the people that seem to be doing the best job are the Crips and the Bloods who actually they, they've called, called a, a truce. truce. And then they came out and they spoke to the media and said, hey, look, you know, we're not out here to go after the police. We're out here to protect our... Uh, our community and right, to because stop when the they, rioters. When, when they initially called the truce, the police put out some sort of press release right. saying the Bloods and the Crips have teamed up to kill us. Oh. And so they had to go to the media and say, this is not at all what we're doing. Right. Oh, we're trying gosh. to stop the violence. And it was, I think, the second or third night of the protesting and rioting where it was actually the criminal gangs, the Bloods and the Crips, that did a better job of preventing the rioting than the police did. Can we stop calling them criminal gangs? I feel like, you know, it's not Well, they fair. do shoot each other and rob one another. So they, they are They're committing criminal acts. I mean, is it is it is it possible that you could be a crip or a blood and, you know, not actually shoot somebody? Or is it do you have to shoot somebody to get into the gang? I, I think that's I pretty much one of the rules to get in. Like you have to <laughs> You know, th- there's the saying, like, three felonies a day. Like, yeah. I think that's one of the rules. <laughs> you have to do, like, do it, three. Like, you know, if you don't do enough crime, then you're not in the gang anymore. You also had to have a teardrop tattoo. <laughs> I don't know. I but just, but I, there, are, there are also, and I, I'm taking the word of the Crips and the Bloods that were on TV during mm-hmm. that interview, there are people that are putting on red and blue bandanas that are destroying stuff, and they're like, yeah, they're not, not us. us. Right. They're just putting on our colors to make us look bad. Yep. I, I believe them. I mean, I, t- I take them at their word on that. You're welcome to share your thoughts here. 855 450 free. I agree. I think that uh, I agree with MLK's statement there, you know, that uh, violence is not the, the solution. And people need to be out there really speaking that in the streets and trying to discourage people from uh, committing this violence. Unfortunately, you have the agents provocateur out there who are encouraging the violence. And I don't know if there has been, I haven't looked, I haven't looked and or haven't seen yet, but I imagine it will only be a matter of time before somebody reveals that they found police officers who are undercover as rioters who are actually encouraging the destruction of property. We've seen oh, that I'll find a Mark Zeiss oh, video. Man. What is that? What he does? Is that his thing? Oh, his thing's always like conspiracy theory, Illuminati. He, he finds all the Illuminati symbolism in every right. music video that exists. <laughs> okay. I knew he did the stuff with uh, like asking people questions. The, the man on the street stuff he does is brilliant. Some of it is. The conspiracy theory, you know, oh, here's a triangle, so therefore Illuminati. That's just crazy. You must be in the Illuminati, Daryl. You're just trying to cover for him. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll come back and uh, talk about Minecraft. Mine Wh- things. Why is it so... Wait, Mine Things or Minecraft? No, Mine Things and Minecraft. The two different games though, right? I know, but okay. you're Mining Things Minecraft. There's more coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Why is Minecraft so dangerous? One bureaucrat will tell us. Kid, this facility is like a ship. So how do I keep us on course without micromanaging every detail? Easy, with Granger. Granger's online tools help give me the visibility I need. I can shop, order, and manage all our activity. Oversee purchases, control costs, all while you guys get to order what you need when you need it. I run a tight ship, kid. I run it with Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Learn more at Granger.com slash online purchasing. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Thank <laughs> you. 
New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com you're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, May 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.11 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,178 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports the House Judiciary Committee yesterday made a token move towards NSA reform with a 25 to 2 passage of the USA Freedom Act, an even more watered down version of Senator Leahy's reform bill from last year, which was criticized for not doing much to start with. Though some are presenting the passage as a dramatic blow to the surveillance state, most analysts seem to agree that the bill, as ultimately passed, is little more than a diversion passed to placate privacy groups. One thing it does do is dramatically expand immunity to private tech companies participating in NSA surveillance schemes, a fact that was no doubt a big factor in Google cheering for it modernizing surveillance in the U.S. Modernizing, but not stopping. Despite being designed as a reform bill, the bill is not expected to significantly alter the NSA surveillance program or to offer significant protections to Americans swept up in it. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports 10 men implicated in the 2012 shooting of then 15-year-old education activist Malala Yousafzai were handed life sentences in a SWAT district Pakistan anti-terrorism court. Malala, best known by her first name, and two friends were shot by Taliban gunmen while they rode on a bus to school. She sustained a head wound but survived and became a symbol of oppression against women and their access to education. She was awarded the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize for her human rights activism, the youngest person ever so honored. The precise charges against the men remains unclear and local Taliban leader Mullah Fazlullah, believed by Pakistani officials to have ordered the attack, was not among the men. Neither was Atula Khan, identified at the time of the incident as the chief suspect who allegedly performed the shooting. The court proceedings were closed to the public and the press. Malala, now 17, lives in Britain where she received medical treatment after the shooting. The two other students who were shot along with Malala, recovered from their injuries, and are now college students in Wells. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. 
Reuters reports New York Mayor Bill de Blasio denied that the city had toughened its policing strategy in response to the riots in Baltimore after some lawmakers accused the city's police force of overly aggressive tactics in its handling of protest on Wednesday night. During a series of marches across Manhattan to protest the death of Freddie Gray, a man who suffered severe spinal injuries while in police custody in Baltimore, there were 143 arrests, mainly for obstructing traffic. De Blasio told a news conference, the strategic approach is is exactly the same. We won't tolerate illegality. We won't tolerate disorder. We will not allow the few to undermine the honest efforts of the many to express their views. Some lawmakers had a different view. New York State Assemblyman Michael Blake, who participated in Wednesday's protest, which started from Union Square, said it was overly aggressive. Priscilla Gonzalez, a spokeswoman for Communities United for Police Reform, said in a statement, it is unacceptable that Mayor de Blasio refused to take responsibility for the systemic lack of respect that the NYPD showed for the rights of peaceful protesters. Last year, New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton was criticized for allowing groups of protesters to disrupt traffic by marching down the middle of major thoroughfares without getting a permit beforehand. Those protests were about the deaths of Eric Garner on Staten Island and Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, who both died at the hands of police. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It was a big night for music's hottest acts, especially for Lord Chillingsworth. In a shocking upset, the young artist took home the spookiest Halloween sound effect album Grammy for Creepy Night in Halloween Manor. Music blogger Ty Vaughn is here. Ty, what a shocker. Lord Chillingsworth's track, Man Being Boiled Alive While Chains Rattle in a Dungeon, was crazy spooky. It was everywhere this year. Haunted houses, Halloween stores, nighttime hayrides. Anywhere you look, people were getting the willies from this album. But a lot of people thought Grammy darling Dr. Spookenstein was a shoe in to win for his album, Laboratory of Madness. And that was a great album. Critics praise Spookenstein's stripped-down approach, rattling real bones together and dripping real blood onto a screaming lady. The class act Spookenstein offered a gracious congratulations to Chillingsworth, saying, I'm a fan of every bloody who was nominated, especially Chillingsworth. I have a skeleton of respect for him as an artist. I just saw him on the dead carpet and congratulated him. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Coming up, the latest in the Silk Road case. Daryl's got an update. We haven't heard one in a while, so we'll tell you what's going on there with uh, Ross Ulbrich, the man who was allegedly behind the Silk Road. He'd been found guilty in a trial earlier this year in federal court in Manhattan, expected to be sentenced in a couple of weeks. But you've got news, Daryl. We'll uh, share that coming up here tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Joining you in the studio, it's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. And Danica, you and we can keep talking about Baltimore, but I think we've covered the most important news. The most up-to-date uh, stuff, yeah. Right, the, the latest from Baltimore being that the cops have been charged. Uh, the police involved with Freddie Gray's arrest have been charged, in some cases, with murder. A uh, variety of charges are being brought by the state's attorney. So that's the latest that's happening there. But there's other interesting Baltimore-related news, like the fact that they're imposing bonds of half a million dollars on some of the people who were arrested, uh, that they've been holding people illegally. or not. Well, I guess it's not illegal when they break their own rules, but they're breaking their own rules, essentially suspending uh, the right of habeas corpus, which limits detention uh, without charges to 24 hours. They've uh, waived that, so they're detaining people a lot longer uh, without charge than they are uh, well had previously done. So there's a lot going on we can talk about there, but let's change gears, Danica, and talk about a story that you have from the BBC, is it? Well, the, or the original story is from BBC, and there is this podcast called Tech Dirt. Have you heard of it? I didn't know they had a podcast. I knew Tech Dirt was a website. It's a website. They do have a podcast. Okay. They brought. They wrote this article, and it references, references both BBC as well as The Guardian in a couple of uh, different segments on here. Okay. Uh, and This is about you, Minecraft? About Minecraft. Very now, popular game. Do you know very much about Minecraft, Ian? I know I've, I've never it. even seen... Um, I've never seen any gameplay, I don't think, so okay. no. I just sort of know... That there's a big blocky character in it, and that the game is fairly like low graphics quality. Eight right. bit. Oh no, it's not eight bit, but it just yes, it, it might have that look to it, right? Like it's three D. Yeah, isn't it's three it? D. It's got there's no three D eight bit games. The basic 
graphics, like the simple, it's very the, the, simple. the most simple ones, pixelated, are perhaps? very pixelated. Yeah. But the one of the beauty, um, beautiful things with Minecraft is that you can download texture packs and make it look as sharp or as oh, detailed really? or as simple as you like it. And uh-huh. That's one of the coolest things about this game is that it's so it's customizable, very customizable. Now, for those that don't know what Minecraft yeah, is, what is, essentially. It? Think of like the 3D um, computer version of Legos. You do have a blocky mm-hmm. character and you create things using materials that you have made in the game. You mine things in the game and then you make things with what you've mined? Correct. So it, it's not ve- now, now that it's been playing for a few years, it's a lot more user friendly because there's all these guides about it. But when it was first starting out there, it was a lot of kind of figuring it out on your own. Well, now, wasn't um, this an independent kind of game? Like, it wasn't much, created by yeah. a major game company? Right. It was created by, I want to say, a team of less than 10 people that mm-hmm. initially created it. Now, w- one of the things... And it blew up. It's huge, It's right? just It's huge. And now, I, be- I believe Microsoft purchased it. Really? Yeah, they, they, they've, actually per- they've actually completed the oh, purchasing there, that through goes. it. Uh, it's not... I haven't really noticed anything different with it, but mm-hmm. you know, now Microsoft is behind it. But one of the things that you have to do in Minecraft is that you have to figure out how to, the basic stuff first is that how you have to make shelter, you have to create weapons and tools. For example, you can find pieces of charcoal and a piece of stick, you put them together, and that makes a torch, so that it lights up dark places. Uh-huh. So Why do you need a weapon? Are there bad guys? There are there are monsters in there, such as oh. like zombies, spiders, and there's these creatures called creepers that they'll sneak up behind you, make a s- and then blow up. And oh, no. if you're a low level player, you'll almost instantaneously die. What happens when you die? Uh, you just respawn and you do can you come back. Do you lose stuff? Do you like lose some you'll of You'll your... lose levels if you have levels built up, but uh-huh. you can come back and you can get usually the mo- majority of your stuff, unless your stuff happens to fall in lava. Okay, so let me see if I'm following this. So you mine things from the land and then you right. build things with those uh, resources. Correct. There are bad guys who can hurt you. Correct. If you die at the hands of one of the bad guys, then you come back with fewer things. There's you, also spiders. There are also spiders and skeletons. You have yeah. to go back and get your things. You're, you're not coming they, back with your things. You so have to go you come back, back empty and then you can go back to the place where you died to kind of collect Correct. your stuff. Yes. But someone else could someone else come along and collect that stuff before you do. If you're playing with other people, they can. And isn't the idea? Or well, hopefully you're playing with friends that will pick up your stuff and say, "Oh, hey, here's your diamond sword. Here's your diamond pickaxe. Uh-huh. You know, don't you know? Here you go. I I picked this up for you. Hopefully you're. Hey, I picked this up good- for you. I'll sell it to you for twenty seven dollars. Are there griefers in the game? And griefers like a if term- you're on a public server, there can be griefers. If you're playing with your friends, hopefully your friends are nice to you and don't do that stuff. But- so a griefer would be somebody who's just trying to like screw around, right? Like yeah, some, or- trying to mess with you. One time, uh, there w- I was playing on a public server. It was a public server, but only had like 20 people on there. It was some What's friends. What's the of maximum? Mine. Uh, it can be hundreds. Really? This, wow. This particular server was only about 20 people. Okay. Um, the admin was playing around with some settings and he actually turned on pvp which is player versus player which means that you can attack and kill your fellow players oh no it had previously been turned off and this girl who i did not get along with very well at all she was not a very nice person um you girls she hit me and then her dog start in the games that started attacking me and killed me and oh. i lost all my stuff and i was a really high level player and my other friend that was with me got did really she jack your stuff she did not. My friend that was with me got the stuff before that happened. Okay. She was laughing about it, but she's being a total mm. moron about it. And so my friend got revenge and flooded her entire house. <laughs> Whoa. Now, how do you do that? It was like, do you pickaxe at a river or something? He until... brought in a bunch of water in a bucket and flooded her house. Oh, wow. The big old bucket. Yeah. So you can you can tell by this game that it's extremely customizable. It You can make it... Um, Player versus player, you can set it so that you play by yourself, you can play with friends, you can play on a public server, you can even set how difficult you want mm-hmm. the survey. So if you want the, there to be monsters, but the monsters actually don't come and attack you, 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 they can just be there as NPCs and just wander around. And they're not any NPC? threat to you. NPC? Non-player control. Right. Ah, okay. So it's extremely customizable, and it you know it's perfect for... Any virtually any type of player that you want. You basically can create it however you want. And when you get into more detailed aspects of the game, you can actually make wires and you can make moving trains. You can make um, underwater surfaces. If you YouTube videos and say Minecraft, Lord of the Rings, you'll find videos where people have spent years 
recreating worlds. People have recreated <laughs> uh, Star Trek ships. People have recreated uh, Ma- Rainbow this Road. Is why, hold on. This is why Minecraft is bad is because it encourages people to infringe on intellectual property. It also encourages you to use your brain. How bad is that? Hmm. So, I mean, it's, it sounds like a little bit like Second Life to me. Now, kind again, of. again, I've never played Minecraft, so I can't make a di- direct uh, comparison. I did play Second Life for a little bit years ago. The Second Life is an old game now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a really decade old. old. Um, but I think some people still play Second Life. Anyway, the idea behind Second Life is you can go into this sort of open world and you can build things in there. I don't know if you have to like mine in Second Life. I don't mm-hmm. think you have to do that. Uh, but somehow you acquire resources in Second Life and you can make structures and you know build like at one point some listeners of free talk live built like a free talk live listening area oh, like, wow. a, like a hangout bar or whatever and uh there was like free talk live branded merchandise in the game that they were you know putting up for sale and things like that so it was a very customizable sort of social experience yeah. so once you're done building things in minecraft uh, you just go out and build more. Or do people sort of hang out and socialize? You can build like, as much as you want. There also is, is there chat, can, like an in-game yeah, chat. Yeah, you can in-game chat. There's mm-hmm. also in-game content. And there's a video. I'll have to find it and see if I can post it. Where me and a couple of other friends go and we fight the Ender Dragon, which is one of the most powerful enemies in the game. You go and you so there's get, bosses. There's bosses there, and you huh. can go into the Nether and you can fight other ghosts you can fight zombie pigs you can die in lava is there a goal the goal is well just to build there's a ton of different goals it just depends on what you're looking for like yes you can build to your heart's content but you can go and explore you can create new worlds you can go fight the ender dragon you can go fight different kinds of bosses Hmm. so there's different kinds of goals that you're wanting to go to there is one kind of end game which i was mentioning the ender dragon which is so far the you know the end part of the game other than that, it's just a bunch of creative juices. This is a blood people. free game, right? Like it's even though you're killing uh, beasts, it's not gory, right? No, there's explosions, but no. There, there's red flashes of blood when spiders die. Do you played it? I've never played it. I watched a video. Right, right. They're red when you hit them, but there's not like any blood spatters mm-hmm. or anything from what I remember. So relatively low. I mean, compared to Mortal Kombat, this is like oh, pff, kids play. Oh, yeah. this is like Mario. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. By the way, the new Mortal Kombat looks absolutely awful. It's so gory. <laughs> more coming up. Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? 
take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free. Share your thoughts here about whatever's on your mind. Coming up, uh, Daryl will be giving us an update on the Silk Road case with Ross Ulbricht facing sentencing here Supposedly in a couple weeks, but there's news about that, and Daryl will share that with us here at 855-450. Free is our toll-free number. You can join us online and get interactive over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we share with you on the site all for free. But if you want to help support Free Talk Live and uh, support what we're doing here, then you can shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. And you can buy stuff through Amazon there. You link into uh, Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, Amazon US. You just go into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the purchase. So get your shopping done and help Free Talk Live all at the same time by starting your shopping experience at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. We're going to talk more about this uh, Minecraft here because there's somebody in the UK who has written an article or somehow spoken out uh, Tech Dirt is reporting on this. It's not Tech Dirt that's claiming this. They're just reporting on They're it. reporting on the BBC, yes. That where someone is saying Minecraft, which seems to be one of the more wholesome kind of, you know, safe video games from all that I've seen and heard about Minecraft, which is why I'm not particularly interested in it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it seems very wholesome. Lots of young uh, children are into this game. Yeah, Kat Bleich would tell you that all the unschooling conferences they go to, they take the kids to a separate room and there's all they these all laptops. They all play Minecraft together? And they all play Minecraft together. Yeah, so uh, I think it sounds like a really uh, good game for young kids and, uh, you know, you're building things. Oh, thanks for calling me young. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I mean, obviously some adults are into this game, too. It was made by adults, right? So, yes. <laughs> um, anyway, there's somebody who thinks this is bad for kids, and I still want to find out why. But first, you can bring up anything. We've got Straight Razor on the line in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live Straight Razor. Good evening. So I was calling in. Oh, whoa, whoa. can you just back off your phone just a little bit there? I appreciate that. Absolutely. No Thank problem. You. Is that better? Sounds great. Yes. Go ahead. So I was calling in about the whole Baltimore situation, and uh, I know that uh, – the problem here is that I don't know why where police officers are denying technology so much because technology could have saved from this situation or at least given us a clear picture of what happened here. I know that in my car, whenever I'm driving around, at all times there is a readout about how much throttle I'm using, how many Gs the car is experiencing, whether I'm using my turn signals. 
the whole thing. So at any time, the department can go back and see exactly how my vehicle was behaving and what I was doing at, wow. at the time in question. And you are a law enforcement officer in Texas. That's correct. So is this co- is so, this uncommon among police departments having this kind of logging? Well, that's another problem is that you see a lot of inconsistencies depending on where you are. Mm-hmm. So some places have you know, these armored vehicles, you know, basically assault vehicles, but don't have any cameras. You know, that's kind of like buying the house before you have a job, you know. So that's another issue. There's so many issues within this, this, uh, this topic that it's kind of hard to figure out where to start. But I think one of the best things to improve, you know, our, these situations would be having the technology there and getting the guys out who are, you know, protesting it, which is generally going to be your, your older officers or the guys that say, oh, well, just trust me because I'm, I'm wearing this uniform. And that's, that's ridiculous. So now, let, like let me said, ask we, this we, question. We, the device yeah. that shows the speed and the direction and everything else, can that be tampered with? So generally that's all encompassed either in the dash cam or in the computer in the squad car. Okay, and dash cams we know can be tampered with because there's a lot of cases where they malfunction for 30 seconds while somebody's being shot in the head in the back seat of the car, and they claim that the guy shot himself even though he was handcuffed with his hands behind his back, and the police report reported that they found no weapons. I I agree, Um, you know, but this is reading so many so many different functions in the vehicle that, you know, I feel like it's, you would have to be pretty technologically inclined apart from pulling the plug, the the plug on the system itself, you know, just disconnecting it or taking the computer out of the car. Yeah. The average cop is Uh, not technically inclined. (laughs) Right. But the average cop knows that the little plug going into the side of the camera turns it off. If you unplug it, like you, you don't have to be technically advanced to know if you unplug something that it turns off. And my thing with that is is if if an incident happens and you just say, oh, well, it just malfunctioned, you know, a minute before the incident and then started working five minutes after the incident, that's pretty suspicious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those things need to be taken into account um, as far as as far as the justice process goes. and, you know, the, the protections that officers are providing for other officers really need to go away. You know, it's it's insane to think that just because you're employed by a certain department that you're somehow, you know, holier than than someone else. Well, I have to say, so, you know, you're always very refreshing, Straight Razor, in what you have to say. But it's certainly not uh, uncommon at all for this thin blue line mentality for the, you know, us against them uh, viewpoint to be coming from the police, right? Like, you're not un- uh, unfamiliar with that from your colleagues, right? The brotherhood? I I have had my, – my career has been greatly detrimented from speaking up in, in all aspects. I have moved jobs. Often, and I have even had to move into you know private security at times hmm. um, because of because I, I can't sit back and let it occur. It, I just can't let it go. Wow, so, a cop with a real you know, moral code. <laughs> now, well, have, you, know, have you ever had the opportunity to turn in one of the bad cops in your department? And if so, what happened? Oh yeah. Okay, so we had an officer that was meeting up with some female partners on the job, and we had just gotten in new new dash cam equipment, and for that particular system, the hard drives were located in the vehicle. Um, One day, they came in and said, oh, well, the hard drives are broken. So we went in and removed the hard drives, which had obviously already been removed and smashed to bits. Whoa. Whoa. So um, one night, me and my partner, uh, who we still work together, and both of us have had quite a few run-ins with this thin blue line, uh, we pulled up on this officer who was in the act with a female friend and caught him on our, our dash camera, uh, and um, oh. he he ended up getting fired after trying to rip the hard drives from our car. 
Wow. Oh, wow. So, yeah, things can get, and that's a really tense situation because you've got three people who all have guns, um, you know, in a dispute, and things get rather awkward when one officer confronts another. I bet it does. Oh, I'm sure. What else did you want to share tonight, so, Straight Razor? Anything else? Like I said, the technology, for the way things are working today, technology is one of the quickest routes to solving many of these disputes, and it needs to be used. I totally agree there. Yeah. Thank you, Straight Razor. I appreciate it, which is one of the reasons I support the officers having body cameras. I know some in the liberty movement are opposed to this. I think it's a good idea, but I don't think that people should get complacent about it. Just because the cops have cameras doesn't mean that you should rest on your laurels and think that you shouldn't also right. take that responsibility. You've also got to be responsible for recording a scene with the police. Uh, don't leave it up to them because they will dis- disappoint you. 855 450 free. Free Talk Live. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. I said uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Is Minecraft a danger to children? Apparently somebody in the UK is saying that it is. Toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE and ExpressCoin. Is that a danger to children? I say no, because they can give you some Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin for next to zero cost. I mean, they're very, very affordable uh, rates over there to change your dollars. Well, you still have to pay for the coins. Right, that's true. Uh, Next to zero cost, meaning on top of the cost of the coins, because there's a transfer fee usually involved in transferring one uh, you know, form of money into another form of money. But not if you use coupon code FTL and order less than $40 worth of cryptocurrency. Then there's no transfer fee at all. Yeah, I wasn't intending to imply that you would get Bitcoins for free uh, from ExpressCoin. That business model wouldn't last for very long. No, it would not. <laughs> um, but it is fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And they are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check. Do it from the U.S. or Canada by going to ExpressCoin.com. You can also do it from your smartphone via their app, which you can download at ExpressCoin.com. And again, up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency can be yours for no fee whatsoever if you use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. So if you need some Bitcoin or Litecoin, Dogecoin, go to ExpressCoin.com. Now, I'm curious, Danica, you spend a lot of time playing Minecraft do they have an electronic currency uh, in Minecraft? Um, do you buy things in the game? You can. It's how do I describe it? You can create villagers or find villagers if you mm-hmm. want, and these villagers in the game will offer to trade you uh, certain things for other certain things. Like some villagers will trade three emeralds for some leather, and it can be just it's randomly created by the game itself. So, so there's barter in the game, but there's no currency. Not no really. No, currency. you make your own currency by mining things. I mean, you can mine, say, precious metals like gold and diamond, mm-hmm. but that's not really used as currency. You're using that to make armor, using that to make I weapons. See. But there is barter between the in-game uh, villagers. Got it. So you were telling us a lot about Minecraft and what it is. It's basically mm-hmm. a game where you are mining resources, then using those resources to build things. Yes. Uh, you can fight with the baddies on some of the servers. Some of the servers will allow you to fight with the other players. It just depends on the, the rules of the servers. Some yes. of them are very large. Some of them are private. Uh, some of them are single player where you're just kind of mining by yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have uh, been, how long, how many years have you been playing this uh, game? Let's see, I initially started playing it in 2010 and purchased my own copy in 2011. So it's, you know, been about four years now. That Hold I'm on, this thing's playing. been out for like five years? Yeah. I just heard about it like a year and a half ago. Well, I can't help you there. You're not a gamer, are you? No. Mm-hmm. Well, that would explain it. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so Danica, why is this such a bad thing? Why are, is somebody over in the UK, and who is it? Is it some bureaucrat? I said it was a bureaucrat earlier, but honestly, I don't know. Is it just some busybody? Uh, the, who is the person who is on the attack well, the against or- Minecraft? Sure, the original article from uh, BBC, is uh, it just says that it was po- published on the BBC website. There's not really an article. They did talk to... Uh, they talked to a couple of parents about it, but the general consensus is that it's encouraging children to stop interacting with the real world and just completely stay immersed in their virtual world. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So I want to hear more about this. What's, sure. What are the, people saying? So, despite the fact that Minecraft is simply an amazing evolution of the Lego concept for the modern age, the moral panic starting the game never seems to stop. The latest case in point is over at the BBC, where the outlet implies that it has heard all of the pro-Minecraft arguments before. It's just choosing to ignore them in order to portray the game as an unpoliced virtual reality hellscape that's rotting the brains of children everywhere. As a what hellscape? As a unpoliced virtual reality hellscape. There's no police in my... We need to create the Minecraft (laughs) police force. They might mine all night long. How dare they? Hmm. While there have been some good points embedded within, there are notably more bad ones. 
like the argument that kids should instead be reading because reading engages imagination and builds character. But don't read on a bus because that's dangerous. Because other kids might stand up and look over your shoulder and put themselves in danger. Or now, you might th- there, there's eye. also no Netflix police. So, you know, like if somebody's sitting there binge watching some TV show on Netflix, right. th- there's nothing saying you've been watching television for 14 hours. Are you okay? <laughs> Have you gotten up out of your chair at all today? Well, like that doesn't happen. Well, if you watch Netflix for, I want to say it depends on the uh, episode and how long it is, but I believe after an hour or two, there is a little pop-up that says, are you still watching Netflix? So it does force you I to think, at least yeah, press I was the say, button. I hadn't seen that. Like I've seen something like that. I don't know if it was in a video game somewhere. But like if you have autoplay uh, set to where it just automatically goes to the well, next episode. Well, it will episode. automatically keep playing, but it's embedded in in the program itself, say, in my PS3. If I'm watching a particular episode, it will pay, play maybe two episodes, but then it will say, are you still watching? And then I have to get up, grab my remote, press the center button to turn on the remote, and then say, yes, I'm still watching. Okay, that's why you don't have autoplay. That way you have to manually press a button, then it doesn't come up with a pop-up. Well, it's actually smart for Netflix because they're paying for, they're paying all, for, the the, they're paying for all that bandwidth, so they're not going to want to keep streaming to someone who's passed out on the couch right but my point is it doesn't make sense to have the autoplay on and then you have to pop something up to stop the streaming it would make more sense to if you watch one episode and you want to watch the second episode after the end of the first one press a button to watch the second one well isn't that what you're describing no it's (laughs) you you can turn on autoplay so uh-huh. it finishes episode one and automatically begins episode two. But what she's saying is after two episodes, it'll stop. After, and- like, it depends on it depends on the program. You, if it's, say, Amazon Instant Video or mm-hmm. if it's Netflix. And it also depends if you're playing it on Xbox or PS3 because they, they have, they're slightly different in how they stream the video to you. But at some point, they're going to stop and say, hey, are you still there? Are you still watching yeah. it? Because you haven't input anything at all in a certain period of and, time. Right. And- That's why I'm saying instead of having this pop-up come up yeah. just have the person have to press a button to begin the second episode what's the difference the difference is you have with, to press a button on the pop-up right but the difference is the pop-up is going to only pop up after it automatically plays a couple of things where after episode one like say you fell asleep in the middle of episode mm-hmm. one if you don't have autoplay turned on Episode two never comes on. Right. With autoplay, episode two comes on, then episode three comes on, and somewhere during the episode three, Uh it pops up. I see. You're saying it should pop up more often. I'm not saying there should be a pop-up. I'm saying saying you should have to press a button to watch the next video. Which is the same thing. It's not the same thing. (laughs) You're trying to say it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. It sounds very similar to me. What you're saying is it would stop playing the video until you give some sort of user input, whether it's a button on the screen or a button on a keyboard. What the hell's the difference? Like the the new, uh, I I hate the new autoplay feature on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I turned that off real fast. Right. So it would be the same thing, except it would pop up in the middle. And that's what Netflix will do. Okay. Except so what you're saying like is the, the third. You're saying the it comes the up in the middle episode. of a show. When no, that no, no. It does it after the show. When See? did it ever come up in the middle of a show? See? When did I say that? That's what I'm saying. I it's thought the you same said thing. during the third show. No, I said no. after the shows before the next one gets same thing. Pain. Same. So it was just a miscommunication. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I thought you were saying like it pops up in the middle of the show. No, Are you after still watching? like Good one Lord. or two episodes after it's done, it will pop up saying, "Are you still watching Netflix?" Right, because they don't want to keep streaming to you. Like, because so many people had in the past with cable television, they'll just leave their TV on all day and walk around their house. They're not watching the TV. This right, is, they want the background noise. Yeah, so, and I imagine Netflix does not want to encourage that behavior because it costs them more money. So, um, anyway, where were we okay. on this uh, Minecraft thing? So, Tech Dark quotes BBC now is saying, I concede the point, but say that it's two-dimensional and that children should be exercising more than their mouse fingers. The other side asks why it is any worse than reading for hours at a time. Because, I say, reading allows you to imaginatively inhabit other minds. The opposition implies that... In, 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 wait, inhabit other minds when you read? Inhabit other minds, yeah. 
it. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but it's certainly imaginative to build things, right? Like when you're in Minecraft. That's the whole point you of Minecraft. You have to use imagination Just in order like to create. Just like you need your imagination to figure out the world in the book that you're reading. Yeah, I, it sounds to me like they're very similar, but let's continue here in a moment. Our toll-free number, there's more, yes? Yes, there all is. All right, 855-450, free. Are you uh, somebody who thinks Minecraft is dangerous for children? We'd love to hear from you. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you're invited here to take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind, 855-450-FREE, especially if you agree with the BBC posts uh, that Danica is referencing here tonight. 
uh, as reported on by Tech Dirt. The BBC post saying that Minecraft is is bad for kids. Right, it's, it's encouraging them to stay in a virtual world and not try and develop any other social skills, essentially. Well, I don't know if it's going to be the most uh, social skills developing thing. Oh, but, I totally agree. Uh, but but it's the claim that you wouldn't be using your imagination in a game like Minecraft is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, right. certainly there's some dumb games out there, and but the Minecraft fact, doesn't seem to be one of them. Right, and the fact that the BBC has purposely said, oh, we hear all the good things about it, but we're just going to ignore it and talk about the bad things. So um, do you happen to—I know you're reading from Tech Dirt, but do you happen to know the BBC article that it's referencing? Is it an opinion piece by one of the BBC's writers— um, because it doesn't sound like news, right? It just sounds like one of their columnists it's, or it's, something like that. It's part of the BBC magazine on their website, yes. It, the title is, Should Parents Ever Worry About Minecraft? Okay. So, and, you know, and I totally agree that there are some, certainly some valid points, but to just completely disregard it and automatically label it as a bad thing without even trying to understand what's the draw to Minecraft, what are the good things that it can do, because I believe that the good things that Minecraft can do totally outweigh the bad well not everybody who is a young person is the most sociable of characters and sure. it's, it could be that these video games allow for them to communicate with others that they would not normally communicate with in their regular lives and you know for for better for worse uh you know some kids just aren't the most sociable characters right like i mean that's just maybe it was the and way they some, were raised or whatever their right and personality. some kids have different hobbies and there's not everyone wants to go play on junior baseball team not everybody wants right. to go take karate lessons some kids want to learn how to play none video of which games. are social either by the way i mean if you're not necessarily you're either. kicking somebody i wouldn't consider that to be a particularly <laughs> social thing uh, and you know, kicking a ball around isn't oh, isn't really socializing either. But kicking a ball around or playing any other sport, if it's a team sport, it does teach how to cooperate with other people. It also teaches hatred of the other team. Am I not in a team when I'm going to go fight the Ender Dragon? I you know I definitely have to use team building skills. Otherwise, you can't fight it alone. Right? We're all gonna die. Yeah. So I did find a story from the BBC that may have prompted the opinion piece. All right, I want to get into it here in a moment. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about the Pocket Power Plus. Because if you are the average person in the United States, you probably have a smartphone, and it's probably gone dead on you at some inconvenient times. But if you get the Pocket Power Plus, you don't have to worry about that because it's a breakthrough in portable power technology that is so powerful that in some circumstances it can actually jumpstart a car. No, really. They give you jumper cables with the accessory pack for the Pocket Power Plus. It also has most of the adapters you'll probably need for it to charge your sm uh, your smartphone or even your laptop. This is an incredible device, and it'll help you out in a lot of circumstances. You can go and learn more about it and get yours at half off by going to Pocket PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. And use coupon code FTL. You'll save even more. This really does fit in a pocket. You can also easily stow it in your glove box, uh, your glove box, your purse, perhaps, or brief briefcase. You're going to want to have this with you so you can help keep your devices charged up when you need them the most. So go to PocketPowerPlus9.com to get yours. And again, don't forget use, uh, to use coupon code FTL to save even more at PocketPowerPlus9.com. Daryl, what is it that you uh, found? All right. So before I get into the thing that I found, I, I just want to sort of uh, respond to something that you said that I think is a totally fallacious argument. Okay. That what? sports teach hatred of <laughs> other people. That is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, sports is competition. You don't have to hate the competition. Look at the in order to be competitive. Fans. The the sports fans hate those other teams, like the Yankees versus the Red Sox. Oh yeah, I mean, that's they a huge rivalry. Right, they divide off. They sit on one side versus the other side. They spit on each other's cars and things like that. Those are there's, the fans, not the players. You don't think that there there's some of that rubs off on the players that there's not rivalries between the teams between the players and I, anger. I, between I played them? sports in high school. Okay, and yes, there's rivalries, but I also hung out and went to church with players from other teams and didn't you so just want to just it was good natured rivalries what was that danica didn't you just want to just bash their heads in at some point though 
it, if it was during the middle of a football game, then yeah, I wanted to you know do whatever it was that you but know they we were needed profes- to do to win. So they were professional enough not to take the competition outside of the game. Then right. Mm. Okay, that's good. You, you well, compete that's nice. on the field. And afterwards, you you know go hang out and so, do whatever it is that you do. So what you're saying is the behavior of the fans and the parents are not necessarily reflective of the people on the teams because some of the parents are some Absolutely. of the worst, right? Oh, I mean, you've yes. seen this, right? Where yes. The, the parents will fight each other over uh, their kids on the field. Yes. Okay. And I've also seen signs at sports fields that remind the parents these are kids and it's just a game. Yeah. How many times, and I've never been to a LAN party before, but I, I've heard about them. Mm-hmm. How many times do you see parents fighting each other over, you know, their kids uh, beating each other at a game in a, at a LAN party? Uh, depends on the age range of the kids, but the ones that I went to, we were in our teenage years, and the parents pretty much left us alone. How they many probably- times do you see the nerds at the LAN party beating each other up? Very, very rarely. Yeah. But it does happen. Very rarely. Like, I... I can't think of anything that would happen. If anything, they would probably just yell, dude, you totally ganked my kill. How dare you? Like they'd get yeah, mad I don't at- know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> they, they'd get mad at you know, t- so- taking someone else's honor points or kill in the game, and that would probably be the most of it. I mean, and they... Y- you may get aggro from a beast or something, and then you would get wiped out at the next poll. But that's pretty much the extent of it. All I'm saying is, Daryl, I, I'm taking you at your word because you've been on sports teams before that, that the people on the teams are more professional about it than the parents or the uh, the people in the, the stadium, the that, fans. That's been my experience. Uh, so, I'll, you know, I certainly will take your word at that. But there's no doubt in my mind that for all of the the, uh, the crap talk that people who play video games get about, it's violent, it encourages violence violence the people that are fans and parents of the sports team seem far more violent or proclivity have a proclivity towards violence than the people who play the video games or the parents of the people playing video games i would say that the people playing playing the video games have a less of an uh, of an issue with being violent than uh, the people watching sports i would probably agree with that i would definitely agree with so that. Let, let me uh get into this story real quick Uh, Also from the BBC, from the beginning of March, a Turkish family and social policies ministry said that the game Minecraft promoted violence and there were (laughs) conflicting reports about what action the government in Turkey was planning to take. Some said it would ask a court to ban the game outright. Others said that it would ask Microsoft to edit the game. According to the Haber Turk newspaper, the Turkish Family and Social Policies Ministry, uh, a report from them said, quote, although the game can be seen as encouraging creativity in children by letting them build houses, farmlands, and bridges, mobs, hostile creatures must be killed in order to protect these structures. Oh, my in gosh. short, the game is based on violence. Hmm. And then it goes on to talk about social isolation, and you know other things yeah, that is being to have, talked about in this other BBC article. Yeah, if you want to have the monsters come after you, by all means, you can create that if you want. You can also make it so that it's easy and that they do not aggro on you. Oh, people. All right. What is aggro? Oh, aggravate. You're aggravating the monsters to attack you. Okay, I, I'm sure that there's a bunch of other people that had no clue what aggro meant. Uh, Okay. <laughs> All right, so Danica, was there more to the tech dirt story that you wanted to share? Yes, there's a couple more. Uh, so continuing the quote from the BBC article that it was saying, because I say reading allows you to imaginatively inhabit other minds, the opposition implies that this is the latest moral panic and that some Stone Age elders probably thought the world was going to the dogs when people stopped just staring at the fire and started telling each other stories. The author pretty clearly sees the lips of the opposition moving. He just can't apparently be bothered to actually hear what they're saying. Of course, it makes sense to encourage kids to read as well as play games, but to dismiss Minecraft as an unimaginative shows a total misunderstanding of the massive cooperative world building that occurs in the game. Instead of actually playing the game and trying to understand it, the entitled article is Dows in Fear, Whether Minecraft is Negatively Influencing Kids. 
The only concessions towards admitting the game's benefits come via gems like this. And the, and uh, this comes into the whole autistic thing that we were talking just a little bit ago. Uh, so when we come back, I'll tell more about that. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. I like the suggestion that the people who want to uh, S-talk a game should try it. They should try playing it and then really see what they think about it. Because a lot of people will talk crap without really having any idea what they're talking about. Absolutely. Uh, more on the way here, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Growth can be an intimidating six-letter word, especially when the guys upstairs want 7% of it. That's why you need one eight-letter word, G-R-A-I-N-G-E-R. Granger. the G is for growth. From industry specialists to over a million products across almost every category, Granger has the resources to help us grow. Now, can you guess what my favorite four-letter word is? W-O-R-K. Let's get back to it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Let me tell you, the road is a much more relaxing place since I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance and started saving money. With that taken care of, now I can think about deep, important things. Like, how come it's a pair of pants when there's only one of them? A real brain teaser. But hey, at least saving money with Geico Motorcycle is as easy as pie. What does that mean, anyway? Geico Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. If you're a liberty and freedom-oriented American, come to the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Schatz Ranch Shooting Range May 1st through May 3rd. Fun for the whole family. Lots of stuff for the kids and lots of great guest speakers and events for everyone. Food, music, shopping, and more. Speakers include Sheriff Richard Mack, Derek Grayson, Joel Skousen, and many more. Plenty of camping room at Schatz Ranch. For tickets or more info, go to ArizonaFreedomFest.com. That's the third annual Arizona Freedom Fest at Schatz Ranch May 1st through May 3rd. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, May 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.11 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,178 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports the House Judiciary Committee yesterday made a token move towards NSA reform with a 25 to 2 passage of the USA Freedom Act, an even more watered down version of Senator Leahy's reform bill from last year, which was criticized for not doing much to start with. Though some are presenting the passage as a dramatic blow to the surveillance state, most analysts seem to agree that the bill, as ultimately passed, is little more than a diversion passed to placate privacy groups. One thing it does do is dramatically expand immunity to private tech companies participating in NSA surveillance schemes, a fact that was no doubt a big factor in Google cheering for it modernizing surveillance in the U.S. Modernizing, but not stopping. Despite being designed as a reform bill, the bill is not expected to significantly alter the NSA surveillance program or to offer significant protections to Americans swept up in it. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports 10 men implicated in the 2012 shooting of then 15-year-old education activist Malala Yousafzai were handed life sentences in a SWAT district Pakistan anti-terrorism court. Malala, best known by her first name, and two friends were shot by Taliban gunmen while they rode on a bus to school. She sustained a head wound but survived and became a symbol of oppression against women and their access to education. She was awarded the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize for her human rights activism, the youngest person ever so honored. The precise charges against the men remains unclear and local Taliban leader Mullah Fazlullah, believed by Pakistani officials to have ordered the attack, was not among the men. Neither was Atula Khan, identified at the time of the incident as the chief suspect who allegedly performed the shooting. The court proceedings were closed to the public and the press. Malala, now 17, lives in Britain where she received medical treatment after the shooting. The two other students who were shot along with Malala recovered from their injuries and are now college students in Wales. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports New York Mayor Bill de Blasio denied that the city had toughened its policing strategy in response to the riots in Baltimore after some lawmakers accused the city's police force of overly aggressive tactics in its handling of protest on Wednesday night. During a series of marches across Manhattan to protest the death of Freddie Gray, a man who suffered severe spinal injuries while in police custody in Baltimore, there were 143 arrests, mainly for obstructing traffic. De Blasio told a news conference, the strategic approach is is exactly the same. We won't tolerate illegality. We won't tolerate disorder. We will not allow the few to undermine the honest efforts of the many to express their views. Some lawmakers had a different view. New York State Assemblyman Michael Blake, who participated in Wednesday's protest, which started from Union Square, said it was overly aggressive. Priscilla Gonzalez, a spokeswoman for Communities United for Police Reform, said in a statement, it is unacceptable that Mayor de Blasio refused to take responsibility for the systemic lack of respect that the NYPD showed for the rights of peaceful protesters. Last year, New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton was criticized for allowing groups of protesters to disrupt traffic by marching down the middle of major thoroughfares without getting a permit beforehand. Those protests were about the deaths of Eric Garner on Staten Island and Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, who both died at the hands of police. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This week, researchers released a comprehensive five-year study linking heavy drinking during pregnancy with attending a concert by Detroit-based rap rocker Kid Rock. The study found that women who had consumed alcohol while pregnant were much more likely to be wearing leather halter tops and making devil horn hand gestures during encores of All Summer Long and Ba With The Ba than those who did not. Drinking three or more alcoholic beverages in less than an hour was highly correlated with going backstage at a Kid Rock show and then getting into a fist fight with another woman in the parking lot. The world's supercomputers released a study this week confirming that they lack sufficient power, presenting a thorough case for significant leaps in speed and memory. Overwhelming evidence found that these complex machines should have total control over the critical systems they manage, including integration into the planet's energy grid, freshwater supply chain, and telecommunications systems. The study's 500 co-authors further concluded that all permutations have been simulated and that this is the optimal course of action. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free. 855 450 free is our number. And you can join us online, of course, over at freetalklive.com. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but we've got Skype tonight and every night pretty much. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So if you can do that, that's always the best way to call because almost always you'll sound better on Skype. With you in studio, it's Ian, Danica, and Daryl. Danica, you were sharing with us a story from Tech Dirt, where they are referring to a BBC piece that is essentially excoriating, of all games, Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the more wholesome 
unexciting games that I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, I have to say, I'm personally not interested in it. It's not my cup of tea. Right, I mean, not your thing. You know, I, I recently finished playing uh, Alien Isolation, which, you know, is definitely my cup of tea. Although it's a little different, for, it's a little slower than I'm used to for a game. It's uh, To me, that was a lot of fun. Um, I like games with, you know, a little bit of action to them and, uh, sure. you know, that kind of thing. I guess Minecraft does have action, but it just seemed like more of a kid's... I guess it just always kind of hit me as a kid's game, even though there are plenty of adults who play it. Uh, and I guess what you like about it is the creativity aspect. Yeah, I like the creativity aspect of it. Uh, recently, I built a library on my server. I've had friends recreate Rainbow Road. Um, a bunch of us went... And- what is Rainbow Road? Oh, Rainbow That's Road. That's from Mario, right? Yes, the Mario Kart. The most annoying level in all of the Mario Karts and you die never because my it. eyes constantly get crossed and I go flying off the edge and can never finish the race. I don't know if that was the same with you, Ian. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's another good game, the Mario Kart game. There's a lot of action, a lot of fun, uh, com- competitive uh, play in that. And But most of the games I would play would easily be more easily ex- uh, excoriable than Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft seems wholesome. It seems like it's, you know, Boring. sort of, you know, <laughs> learning it. or it seems learning oriented, seems right. very kind of an intellectual uh, kind of game in comparison to a lot of the games out there. But yet, apparently because of its popularity, it's being attacked. Oh, of course, because cr- encouraging people to think is a bad thing and encourages isolation. Well, they're saying that it uh, that books would be better for kids because books would help their imaginations better, even though, as you pointed out, you have to use your imagination to play Minecraft because that's the whole point of the game is to build things from the things that you mine. I don't imagine there are too many people who just go around mining and never build anything in Minecraft. Right. Even if someone is just starting out playing and they may not understand it completely, they can start getting experience by mining, and then they realize, oh, hey, putting this on top of something else, create something. I'm going to mm-hmm. create an archway. Oh, cool, I made an archway. Let's make a house. And they can grow. How so. long does it take? How long do you have to spend to build a house? Oh, depends on how fast you want to go. I think you can build like a your basic like four-wall structure to protect you from darkness and monsters in probably like five minutes. If that. Okay. Yeah. So a tiny house? Yeah, you can make a tiny house. Okay. Or a mansion. Or right. a mansion would take considerably longer, right. but you know you can make your mansion. Uh, you know, there's lots of uh, Westeros themed uh, landscapes in Minecraft, so definitely do the search Westeros? for those. Westeros. Yes, Daryl is obsessed with Game, Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. Okay. Westeros is the region where a lot of the story is told. Gotcha. But, yeah. And then you go across the narrow sea into Maureen and Koth. And some of the other places. And he makes fun of me for playing uh, Minecraft. <laughs> All right. So what are we missing here? What other aspect to the story uh, have we yet to cover? So the only concession, uh, continuing the Tech Dirt article, uh, he says the only concessions towards admitting, the BBC admitting, the game's benefits come via gems like this. For some autistic children who have trouble with complex social interactions, Minecraft Minecraft is clearly a good fit with its lack of intricate social cues and simple (laughs) environments. (laughs) But for many parents, the absence of that complexity in a world where their children spend so much time might be a reason to be wary. So the article goes on to say, whether it's Minecraft, apps, or the internet at large, there is such a thing as parenting or paying attention, understanding what your children are up to. That's true. Yeah. You should understand what your kids are doing on the internet. I don't think that's a bad idea. In fact, I would say that if you've got kids and uh, you know they're interested in video games, you should play them with them, right? Like, sure. Sure. Get your own computer and go and build something with your kids in Minecraft. That mm. sounds to me like that would be a good kind of wholesome family experience. I knew of, um, there was a family that I knew of back, I don't know, it must be a decade ago now, an old friend of mine, he's dead now, but uh, but anyway, he and his family would, they'd actually play EverQuest together. And What is EverQuest? EverQuest was what? and or is, I don't know if it's still out there, they're probably some, it's probably still going. I think I, there's EverQuest too, but I'm not sure if people play it. But So, and so... Years ago, Daryl, they uh, started with these massively multiplayer online role-playing games. So, uh, classic, classic RPG. World of M- Warcraft. Or, MMORPG. Yeah. Or World of Warcraft would be one of the big ones. Anyway, there was so it was like World of Warcraft was a biggie and EverQuest was a biggie. And so EverQuest was like a first-person perspective, I think. Maybe it was third-person. But anyway, it was... Uh, Fairly popular. I think Sony put it out, and you know, it was one of those worlds where you go around and kill the beasts. You know, kind of uh, classic uh, 
Game of Thrones kind of you beast. Could, what, okay. you, you could be different kinds of classes. I've I've never played Evercrest, but you could be like a like a magician of some kind, a warrior, you know, the, the classic D and D style, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I've never played it either. I only observed them gotcha. playing it. Okay. And you know, you're casting spells and there's swords and things like that. And the massively multiplayer aspect means that there's a bunch of people on the server that you're on. And so you're in this large world and, you know, you could be doing everything from, uh, you know, trading things at a, in a town to chatting with other players to going on missions by yourself or with teams or, yes. or guilds or whatever, groups of players who would get together. And so rather than, you know, your typical family situation where mom and dad have no interest in the video game and then the kids are just playing the game and then, you know, they're like completely separated. They can't talk about anything because they don't have anything in common. This whole family would play the game, and then when they would sit down for dinner, they'd have dinner together rather than a situation where, you know, the kids are still playing their game <laughs> yeah. and mom and dad want to have dinner, but the kids don't want to come to dinner. So, like, they would actually sit down and they'd go to dinner together and they'd talk about their experience in the game. And it would actually give them something to talk about as a family instead of this sort of typical, what'd you do at school today, How son? How was school today? You know, that's that nonsense, sort of nonsensical uh, family conversation that's supposed to be, you know, worth something i've played games with my family minus my mom my mom's never been a gamer but back in the day my dad and brothers and friends we used to play quake and then that moved on to mass effect and then that went on to borderlands so we still play together at, you know not so much because we're all in different time zones in different areas but every now and then we'll get together and we will play together and, and what's that like? I never did that with my parents besides playing board games. So I imagine there's some similarities. Sure, yeah, absolute similarities. I mean, in back at home we would just sit around in a room together and play. Now, you know, obviously I'm here in New Hampshire, they're mm -hmm. back west, so we just try and find time whenever is most convenient. We get together and we all get on Skype or we all get on TeamSpeak and we talk, we pick characters, and we go and mm -hmm. we have a grand old time. So the massively multiplayer online role-playing games, Daryl, uh, I never wanted to get involved in because I was always afraid of them because I didn't want to get sucked into them because they never end. So unlike your typical video game where there's an ending to it after you've played for so many hours, right. it, it will end, um, you know, as long as you're following the storyline appropriately. These games just keep going, and you also have to pay for most of them as well. So not yeah, only a lot do you have of them to are paying subscriptions. You, not only do you have to buy the game, you then have to pay ten or fifteen bucks a month for the privilege of playing the game. And for pointless, me, yeah, for me that's an insult. I don't like the idea of having to continue to pay to play a game that you know I've already paid for. And so not only did I not want to have to pay to play, but I also didn't want to pour the countless amount of hours in that would have to be poured in and i'd seen people be addicted to these games too and so i did not want that to happen to me yeah, and so. did did you ever see the south park episode where they were playing world of warcraft and there was some guy that was basically like a bully character the sort of a thousand truths is that the name of the no that's the name of the weapon that, the... that's the name of the weapon they had to go to fight the the unstoppable south park? character yes yeah, so they wind up like calling the president of Blizzard whatever Entertainment. Uh, game it was, and so they work together like days on end, no sleeping, uh, mm -hmm. playing so that they can fight this guy and defeat him. And then after they do, they're like, "All right, so what do we do now? We we play the game. Right, you go, go to another to fight." <laughs> Uh, all right, so more coming up here, 855, 450 free. Whether you've been addicted to online multiplayer video games, you want to tell us your story, because for some people this has been a real problem. Like, they haven't gone to work, they've lost their girlfriend. Uh, seriously, there's some there's a, there's a point at which you've gone too far uh, yes. with these games. 855, 450 free. More coming up on Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. 
And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of youthful greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of youthful greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a -a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. CopBlock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopBlock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopBlock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopBlock possible. So please join the CopBlock network now at copblock.lrn.fm. That's copblock.lrn.fm. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free, 855 450 free, or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Maybe. You've gone too far with those online video games, and you've lost your job. You've lost your girlfriend. Sometimes it's it's like a country music song, uh, people's experiences with these games. They lose everything because they get uh, hooked on them. So, I mean, there is, there is possible that you could go too far with this. Sure. But at the same time, to say that kids shouldn't be playing games like Minecraft... Uh, I mean, I don't care if kids are playing games that are violent, so long as, you know, they know the difference between fantasy violence and real violence, and I think... I think most kids are aware of that. I know that I was when Certainly. I was when I was younger. But yet, there's all of this uh, frustration and hand wringing by certain uh, busybodies who seem to think that video games are the devil incarnate, and that you know even a game as innocent uh, and as wholesome as Minecraft could be considered dangerous. It just seems so ridiculous to me. But that's what 
the BBC was saying in a recent article, as being cited by TechDirt, will continue. There's a little bit more that you wanted to share because The Guardian, I guess, has come in with a counter to the BBC piece. Yeah, and a stark contrast. And it doesn't say if it's The Guardian UK. Uh, it came from TheGuardian.com, so I believe it's a different but still like in the same umbrella group. But yeah. I thought it was interesting how it was like two opposing UK sources, but anywho. So before we go on with that, though, please check out Freedoms Phoenix. You're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies over at freedom, uh, freedomsphoenix.com every day. They're providing you with the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com, sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. So, uh, the rebuttal, Danica, from... The Guardian to what the BBC was saying about Minecraft. Sure thing. The Guardian makes the counter argument that maybe it makes more sense to try and understand Minecraft instead of fearing it, allowing this informed education to fuel intelligent parenting choices. Imagine that, right? So here's a quote from The Guardian. Here's a simpler way for parents who don't feel they understand Minecraft to build their knowledge. Sit down next to your child and watch them. Ask questions. See if they will teach you how to play it with them. This doesn't mean you'll avoid having to make decisions about the time, about the amount of time your child spends in Minecraft's beguiling hyper reality, rather than the unblocking real real world. But it does mean you'll have a better idea and less worries about what they're up to and how it can fit into their life. And you can indirectly stop them from playing Minecraft by sitting down with them and asking them to tell you everything about the video game. Because most kids aren't (laughs) going to want to explain to their parents what's going on with the video game. They'll just be like, "Uh, I want to go read a book now. There's there's an annoying way, the bad way of doing it, and a good way of doing it. But you are right. There is a chance that the kid could be completely disinterested because mom and dad all of a sudden have an interest. That's right, true. especially if it's one of these things to where the parents hardly ever pay attention to the kid. Like, you know, he's one of these latchkey kids. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, mom and dad are interested in the video games. Sure, yeah. yeah. I can see where you're coming from there, uh, Daryl. If it doesn't seem genuine, they'll they'll probably fair, the kids will probably figure that out. But if you are genuine in your interest in finding out, you know, what this game is all about... Then I think that there are a number right, of kids who would appreciate that. Right, but the parents that are that. only going to ask the kids about the game because they read it in a newspaper to ask your kids about the game. Well, there's a way they're they not going to be genuine. Yeah, true. They they're can, only going to they be doing it because they, you know, saw it in a newspaper. Or it, it's kind of like Ian when we were young, and Danica, you're probably too young to remember this. There were all these very special episodes of primetime TV shows. Uh huh. Yeah. Like you know. Tonight on a very special episode of The Cosby Show, make sure you talk to your children about drugs. And it was yeah. the episode <laughs> where, it's pregnant. where Theo had the joint in his book and it wasn't his. And they're like, uh, son, <laughs> where'd this come from? Or like the afternoon after school specials. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, a your parents specials. would only have the conversation with you because it was on the after school special or in the very special episode. So if there was a controversial episode, they... The starting out with the t- on a very special episode was code for this is going to be a very that they would even play it in the promos like okay Thursday night on a very special episode of and fill in the blank of whatever show it was interesting a very special episode of Saved by the Bell <laughs> that kind of they did that stuff Kelly gets pregnant Renee is on the line in Wyoming you're on Free Talk Live hello Renee hello Renee going once. I take pills to sleep and wake and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I just had a few comments on that. Um, I have epilepsy. I was just recently diagnosed. And um, I've had several seizures in the past two weeks. Went to the neurologist. Um, The neurologist prescribed me uh, a medication, which I refused to take for my bipolar when it first came out because of the side effects. And he prescribed that to me and didn't bother to check my drug interactions with what I was already on. Oh. And two of, two of them combined can cause respiratory failure, coma, or death. So oh, needless oh to say, I have a figure. Yeah. I hear I'm already having seizures. Like, I want to want to die. You know, they're trying to kill me. And wow. medical marijuana is not allowed in the state of Wyoming. And everybody's got sticks up their butts and don't understand it. They've never tried it. They've never used it. It has fantastic medicinal effects that people just 
don't even acknowledge, and it really just undoes me. Oh, I share you know, your so frustration. I'm, I'm, you know, seriously considering relocating to Colorado because, you know, to for my health, which is which is a pretty significant thing. Yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to take care of yourself in this world. Uh, I know that uh, New Hampshire does have a medical cannabis program that's passed, but it's very weak in comparison to other states. Well, not only two... is it incredibly weak, it's not even been implemented yet. Right, right. and there's only going to be two dispensaries, correct? Well, I heard four. there were four. Oh, four, There's okay. going to be four alternative treatment centers. None of them have actually begun building their locations. Yeah, neither one of them They've have not the started bell. growing the cannabis, uh, so it... The soonest it's going to be 2017 before anybody in wow. New Hampshire that is a therapeutic cannabis patient is able to legally get therapeutic cannabis. I th- although I wonder, Daryl, is it possible to get a card from like Vermont and and will they have recipro- reciprocity to where uh, there, there will there's limited reciprocity so that if you have a card from out of state. And they, you know, catch you in New Hampshire with it and you show, show them the your card. card. As long as you have under whatever New Hampshire's laws mm-hmm. say, then you're okay. All right. But if you're visiting, let's just say that you're visiting from Arizona or Wyoming and you run out while you're in New Hampshire, you will not be allowed to purchase from the alternative treatment centers. You, so, right. You can't legally acquire that is more. Just messed up. Yeah, that I, is just messed up. Yeah, <laughs> and they need to really evaluate this. And people, you know, that haven't tried it, I've, I, you know, I used it for recreational purposes as a teenager. And coincidentally, I, the only time in my life, I am manic depressive. I've been diagnosed for thirty years now. I, I've struggled with it all, all my life, most of my life. And um, the only period, the longest period of time that I was medication free was during the time when I used it. Well, I and would say that, then, you, um, know? you know, if you want to make sure you protect yourself as much, much as possible, you can get over to uh, Colorado. I think Montana also has a medical program uh, as well. Well, you know, I want to make a speak, and I want to know what, what is the first step into, you know, trying to help with this situation. You would have to contact uh, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws in Wyoming. I think that would be your best first step. Thanks, Renee, for the call tonight. They are usually the most well-connected on those issues. We'll come back with more here, and uh, let's talk about the Silk Road coming up on Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge, at mark at freetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, mark, at freetalklive.com. Now, this is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. After the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already opened cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We'll, of course, take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. We've talked about everything from the Freddie Gray case and the developments there with police being arrested and charged with murder. Apparently, there's breaking news that all six of the officers have all posted their bonds. Oh. Amazingly. And I, I wonder how quickly there will be Kickstarters and GoFundMes and Indiegogo fundraisers for these six guys. To give them a bunch of free money, you mean? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, unfortunately. Because it, it seems as though every time a police officer makes national headlines for doing something despicable, somebody sets up one or more fundraisers mm-hmm. and raises large amounts of money. So uh, we've got that that on the table. Also, we've been talking about Minecraft and video games and parenting. Uh, so you can come on to all of those discussions. Also, coming up, we'll talk about the Silk Road. But I want to tell you about... What you should seriously consider getting mom for Mother's Day, which is coming up in just over a week. It's Sunday, May 10th. Uh, that's Mother's Day. I thought Day. it was the 17th. No, I looked it up just recently. It was uh, Mark says it's the second Sunday It's of the second Sunday May. in May, yes. And so the first Sunday would be this weekend. The second Sunday would be May 10th. 1-800-Flowers does take Bitcoin, so you can certainly send flowers that way. I would not recommend uh, flowers, however. I would recommend Sherry's Berries. And that actually, too. you can get flowers and berries through Sherry's Berries. So you don't want to go with that other company that you mentioned, Danica. You'll want to go with Sherry's Berries uh, because, well, that's how Free Talk Live benefits. And, uh, and if you use code FTL, then they'll know that you've come from Free Talk Live, and you can get over a 40% savings to get giant, freshly dipped strawberries starting at just $19.99 from Sherry's Berries. You click on the microphone over at berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com, and type in code FTL to get the deal. Plus, you'll want to go with the extra $10 deal, which gives you double the strawberries. I'm telling you, if you don't do the double the berries, you'll wish you had uh, later on because just, or mom would wish that you had yeah they're really good and uh, and the more you have the more likely you are to share them and the more likely your mom will be to share these things because they're awesome uh, you won't be disappointed they're the best berries you can find they pick the best of the best like top grade berries and then they take the top portion of those berries and they you know give the rest to charity uh, basically they've uh, topped them with white milk and dark chocolatey goodness chocolate chips nuts and decorative swizzle 
And uh, you can also get some other stuff from Sherry's Berries as well, like cake truffles, brownie pops. And like I said, there's a flower and strawberries combo oh, uh, that's okay. available. So uh, Sherry's Berries, go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Don't forget code FTL to get the special offers. And don't forget to double the berries for just $10 more. Again, code FTL at berries.com. Don't wait because you're going to want to make sure you get your uh, your date for delivery booked sooner rather than later. And Mother's this. Day is May 10th. That's right. So berries.com, code FTL. Uh, Daryl, you've got an update on the Silk Road case. The Silk Road is, of course, the world's most infamous underground marketplace. It is shut down. The original Silk Road was taken out back in late 2013. Then in late 2014, the uh, second Silk Road was taken out by the FBI. There's now a third Silk Road uh, that presumably has nothing whatsoever to do with the same operators from the first and second ones. But the first one was allegedly created uh, and operated by Ross Ulbricht. He was convicted of that, at least, at a trial in federal court earlier this year. Ross is a man in his late 20s, maybe 30 now, 29, 30 years old. Uh, went to school, college, a you know, college graduate, mm-hmm. really brilliant guy who put his brilliance to work by creating the world's most infamous black marketplace, where people could sell and buy uh, drugs, fake IDs, all kinds of other interesting, sometimes illegal products. There were some legal products that were sold there, but mostly it was drug sales that were going on. And so uh, he became one of the world's most wanted men as a result of that. And the feds and other law enforcement agencies around the world essentially teamed up to bring him down. And now, after being found guilty by a jury, after a very unfair trial where the judge basically granted the prosecution every single objection that they made and every motion to suppress and 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 there was a lot of stuff uh, from the defense where the defense wanted to present something. And they were refused. And they were told, you can't do that because we're pending investigation on the DEA agent (sighs) and the Secret Service guy, and you can't say this. Yeah, it was seriously the most one-sided case I had ever seen. Right, and then afterwards, it turns out that the DEA agents who were operating in this case, or at least one of the agents and then a Secret Service agent, were corrupt and were essentially trying to steal the Bitcoin that they had confiscated from the Silk Road and effectively did steal it, but Mm -hmm. they ended up getting caught. They themselves are now facing felony charges. So that, to me, throws the entire case into question as far as the veracity of the evidence being presented against Ross Ulbricht. But the defense was not able to present any of that information to the jury. They weren't able to use that information to sort of throw the uh, throw some doubt in uh, to the agent's testimony and and so because of that the jury was precluded from knowing a lot of really important information that would have helped them make a a fair decision even the agent who supposedly found the Silk Road server using some weird tricky magic that doesn't actually work here on earth uh, he did not testify so the only statement that the jury had was this weird fantasy fiction thing that he wrote as his official statement. And again, based on, you know, physics and, you know, the laws of computers, what he says happened could not have happened on right. this planet. Maybe on, you know, Krypton or <laughs> Tatooine or Alderaan or the Death Star, but not on Earth. So this whole trial was just a mess, and Ross is now facing life in prison. Right, and there's slight good news maybe for Ross. Uh, The story came out on Wednesday that the judge in the Silk Road case has agreed to delay sentencing of Ross Ulbricht. The judge, who is Catherine Forrest, or as some people have started calling her, Forrest Grump, (laughs) ordered the sentencing to be postponed from May 15th until May 29th. She also scheduled a separate hearing on May 22nd to address some of the issues behind the delay. The defense team for Ulbricht, this from Vice.com, initially requested the sentencing be postponed so it could have more time to prepare a response to government allegations that six people died from overdoses on drugs purchased from the Silk Road. According to a document filed April 17th, the government also plans to have the parents of two of those individuals speak at the sentencing. Uh, As though Ross Ulbricht, who ran the website, has anything to do with the quality of the products serviced there. Right, and here's 
sort of a cognitive dissonance sort of thing, or maybe it's just a difference of how certain levels of criminals are treated. There are hundreds of thousands of people that die every year from using prescription drugs. That's right. <laughs> but the CEO of the prescription drug company never faces a single charge. Yeah. No. Imagine that. Lynn Ulbricht, Ross's mother, who has been on Free Talk Live before, she is quoted by Vice as saying, What is enough for these people? Nothing short of a life sentence for nonviolent offenses? Uh, she also That's, wrote yeah. a blog post of the alleged overdose deaths. Uh, quote, obviously, the prosecution wants to make Ross an example and give him as high a sentence as possible. The judge's agreement to delay the sentencing comes less than a day after she denied Albrecht's motion for a new trial. Oh, I was wondering what happened with Which his defense that. team filed due to corruption, and that's the corruption that we had talked about. Yep, not a surprise. She denied that motion for, uh, for a new trial. Shocking. The May 22nd hearing, called a Fatico hearing, will allow the judge to decide where to take certain evidence, like the overdose deaths, into account in the sentencing. Forrest said Albrecht is required to state what evidence he plans to put forth, as well as a list of witnesses he plans to have. That is due by May 15th. Albrecht has already... And that for those keeping count, that's a full one week prior to the hearing. Yet, when he had the initial hearing, he did not find out who was testifying against him until three days prior. Oh, That's right. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't really say this is good news. I mean, it's just delaying the inevitable. There's more coming it up here. Helps the defense team a little. Does it? Maybe, I don't know. No. I don't get your don't get your hopes up here. It's free no. talk live. There's more coming up. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. You've been lied to. Being overweight is not about overeating, not exercising, or a lack of self-control. Diets, gyms, and pills can't fix it. It's your hormones. Go to 99skinny.com for a free video where Dr. Stephen Siskin explains the four hormonal barriers to weight loss in men and women over 40. When I first started losing the weight, all my clothes were falling off and got some skinny jeans, and my husband is chasing me around the table again. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. Go to 99skinny.com to see this riveting free video. That's 99skinny.com. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Just enough time for you if you want to call to join the discussion on anything you'd like to talk about. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. We have Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. If you like Free Talk Live and what we're doing here on the show, then we'd like to encourage you to support our satellite fundraiser. It's happening for about two and a half weeks uh, we have left. It was 60 days to start. Uh, we're over 10% of the way to the goal of $22,000 uh, to purchase three years' worth of satellite broadcasting, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, over Africa to bring the message of liberty and all of the great liberty-oriented shows that you hear on LRN.FM, including Free Talk Live, Daryl, your show, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, and dozens of others, uh, bringing the ideas of freedom to the people in Africa who really, some of them, need it the most. Uh, so if you want to help us with that, there are some perks you can get in return for your donations over at africa.lrn.fm. When you go to that URL, it'll forward you right to the Indiegogo campaign, which has a lot more detail, a four-minute long video that you can watch to get it, kind of give you an idea of why this matters, uh, to me at least. And you can help out by contributing. We'll also take Bitcoin as well. So once again, go to africa.lrn.fm. That's Africa. And Go, go ahead, go, give the URL one more time. Africa.lrn.fm. And I want to announce a new perk. This oh. is something that I have not even talked to Ian about. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Surprises. Right now, there's a perk where if you donate $100, Mark Edge or yep. Angel Clark will do your voicemail greeting. For $75, I will do your voicemail greeting. Damn, price competition here. I'm going to have to go, <laughs> and I'll have to add that after the show. So I'll make a note of, uh, of that. 75 bucks. Daryl will record your custom voicemail greeting for yes. you. Okay, very cool. You, you can have me do it. My regular voice, I can do a few weird, goofy voices. Do you, you do it in your Britney Spears voice. You have a Britney Spears voice? I, I don't really have a Britney Spears voice, He no. did it karaoke a few really? weeks ago. <laughs> but you, you can have, like, Beavis do your voicemail for you, because that, that'd be kind of funny, right? <laughs> it's not a bad Beavis. Not the best, but not bad. Can you do Stewie? Not really, no. Oh. All right. So thank you, Daryl, for the generous uh, offer. Once again, africa.lrn.fm. I'll get that up there later so people can do that uh, because they are not. They do let you add perks later on in the campaign. So yes. I can, I can do that. Uh, all right. So you had a little more from the Ross Ulbricht update where yes. the sentencing has been delayed. It was going to be in the middle of May. Now it is at the end of May. Yes. So for... now it's May 29th. Uh, Ross and his mother have already stated plans to appeal the conviction. Yes. However, Lynn has said that the defense fund is buried in debt oh, from no. the trial. Oh, no. And they are soliciting donations on the website freeross.org. Oh, God. I'm so sad to hear that. I mean, I don't know what this attorney cost them, but it does not sound like it was cheap because I know they had raised over $300,000. Maybe even 400,000. Uh, I forget what the final number was that I had seen last, but 
the fact that you can't even get through one trial in federal court with half a million or near to half a million dollars is insane to yeah. me. And are they already? Have, aren't you not supposed to pay the attorney until the case is decided one way or the other? Oh like, no, there- you'll have to pay a retainer up front. And you will have to pay at the very least. I don't know how all attorneys do it. Was the retainer the three hundred thousand? No, 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 no. That's how much they had raised on Uh, their uh, their fundraiser. There's also all kinds of fees associated with stuff. I remember when Ademo Freeman was appealing his wiretapping conviction. Mm -hmm. He had to pay somewhere around the neighborhood of twenty two hundred dollars just for transcripts. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So at least he had figure what that would wind up being for federal court and filing fees and everything else. At least he had an attorney, uh, uh, Ademo had an attorney working for free, a pro bono on that that particular case. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, these attorneys in the Ulbricht case were not working pro bono, and it doesn't even sound like they were working at a reduced rate. Uh, It sounds like they were getting charged full rate, whatever the hell, whatever insane amount of money that is for a federal case. And I got to say, I know that his mom and he apparently are completely happy with the attorneys that they that they, you know, and the representation they had. But I feel like their attorneys are terrible. And I was going to say, it just doesn't seem like they got a very good work for their money. They started the trial by announcing that he was guilty, basically. <sighs> and the in the opening statement, the attorney basically said Ross Ulbricht created the Silk Road. So he essentially convicted him right there within the opening statement. Well, that worked for Adimo when Brandon Ross said, I'm not challenging the felony conviction. Yeah, that was at uh, the appeal. Was what you No, that was at the Supreme Court hearing within the first 30 seconds. That's what I mean, at the appeal at the Supreme Court. I'm, we're talking about at the district level, at the federal district Right, court. well, Ademo didn't have a lawyer had no in attorney. his uh, initial Correct. hearing. Correct. So apples, apples and oranges in that particular case. Slightly. Um, so I have to say, you know, if, even if this attorney was only $50,000, it would have been a terrible deal. I don't think that he should have opened with the, you know, the fact that... He had uh, run this website, and then, you know, just all along, I don't feel like the attorney was particularly good. He dissuaded uh, the—he dissuaded Ross and his mother from allowing the activists to continue doing activist stuff outside, like trying to reach the jury with a message of jury nullification to encourage the jurors to vote not guilty, to vote their conscience, uh, to bring this information to the jury. The attorney was opposed to that. And the ostensible reason for it was that because that would somehow put things in greater jeopardy if the if the jury was sequestered, that that would make Ross look like some sort of big drug kingpin or right, whatever. Right, because they generally only do the sequestration for mobsters. Yeah. And that was just a, that's just a few points as to why I feel like, wow, this was not a, a good deal. And now this attorney wants to appeal for them. But he's going to want another half a million dollars or yep. whatever the heck it's going to cost to uh, to run the appeal, which is just – it's madness. And uh, by the way, I've got a letter, which we don't have time to read tonight, but um, this letter is from a federal prisoner who has some comments on the Ross Ulbricht situation. I'll, I'll read you an excerpt from this. It's a four- or six-page letter. Some, it's fairly lengthy. But he says that Ross Ulbricht was doomed the moment he was arrested by federal agents. The federal system has a 97% conviction rate because almost everyone who goes through it takes a plea deal. Because if you go to trial, you pretty much get the maximum amount of time that you can get. If Ross Ulbricht doesn't get sentenced to life in prison, I will be shocked, is what this guy says. And he's in federal prison. He's in what's called a communications management unit, which when I do get the cha- uh, the chance to read this full thing on the air, we'll tell you more about that. But essentially, if you get uh, any kind of conviction that has to do with computer crime, you end up in one of these communications management units. Oh, I've heard about those. Yeah, well, they uh, they scan all your outgoing mail. They read wow. it. If you say certain things about your case, it won't make it out of the uh, the jail. So it's very it's like a censorship unit, basically. I wonder if they would catch on if you did subliminal messages. To like using code words or something? No, not not code words, because people can catch on to code words. But write out whatever it is you're writing and capitalize certain letters to have like a message within a message. Yeah. 
so that whoever gets it reads only the capital letters right. to get the hidden message. I wonder if that would sneak past the guards. That's yeah, a good question. Uh, I don't know how well trained they are in, in ferreting stuff like that out. And, and something else that I'm curious if it will get past the guards, I'm mailing Ross Ulbricht a copy of the newspaper that I publish. The FPP News? Yes. Uh, had a subscriber drop off. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, that allowed me, oh, I've got extra stamps this month. So I'm going to send Ross a copy of the paper. Very cool. cool. And it's going to be interesting to see if they wind up letting him have a pro-liberty newspaper. Because we know that Adam Kokesh tried to send an inmate a copy of his book, Freedom, and it got denied. And they said, this entire Mm. publication is dangerous. Because it says freedom on it? And did they even read the book? I don't know if they did or not. <laughs> you know, presumably they did to determine that the entire publication was dangerous. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we will keep you in the loop as the Ulbricht case continues to develop. I mean, obviously, I hope that they go for the appeal. You got nothing to lose at this point except for apparently your life savings uh, in, the, in the case of his parents. Yeah. Uh, and if the uh, jail there in New York that Ross is at that's right. rejects the newspaper. I wonder if prison legal news would wind up doing something to try to, you know, make mm. sure that inmates are allowed to get the news. Prison legal news is a publication that is monthly sent to prisoners all around the country. I would imagine the feds are probably smart enough to not uh, reject prison legal news, but generally what happens with no. prison I'm saying my publication, yeah, I know that. Prison Legal News, which has been rejected by some jails down in Florida right. and have then been sued. Right. That's what Prison Legal News does is they send their publication into different jails. And when it gets rejected, they sue the jail and then they beat them bad because of First Amendment and all that. But I don't know if Prison Legal News would necessarily take up your case. They would probably try to send their own publication in. And if it got rejected, then they'd go after them. Uh, but I suspect the feds are a little smarter than the average, you know, jail down south. We'll see you tomorrow. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, May 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.11 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,178 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. 
Antiwar.com reports the House Judiciary Committee yesterday made a token move towards NSA reform with a 25 to 2 passage of the USA Freedom Act, an even more watered down version of Senator Leahy's reform bill from last year, which was criticized for not doing much to start with. Though some are presenting the passage as a dramatic blow to the surveillance state, most analysts seem to agree that the bill, as ultimately passed, is little more than a diversion passed to placate privacy groups. One thing it does do is dramatically expand immunity to private tech companies participating in NSA surveillance schemes, a fact that was no doubt a big factor in Google cheering for it modernizing surveillance in the U.S. Modernizing, but not stopping. Despite being designed as a reform bill, the bill is not expected to significantly alter the NSA surveillance program or to offer significant protections to Americans swept up in it. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports 10 men implicated in the 2012 shooting of then 15-year-old education activist Malala Yousafzai were handed life sentences in a SWAT district Pakistan anti-terrorism court. Malala, best known by her first name, and two friends were shot by Taliban gunmen while they rode on a bus to school. She sustained a head wound but survived and became a symbol of oppression against women and their access to education. She was awarded the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize for her human rights activism, the youngest person ever so honored. The precise charges against the men remains unclear and local Taliban leader Mullah Fazlullah, believed by Pakistani officials to have ordered the attack, was not among the men. Neither was Atula Khan, identified at the time of the incident as the chief suspect who allegedly performed the shooting. The court proceedings were closed to the public and the press. Malala, now 17, lives in Britain where she received medical treatment after the shooting. The two other students who were shot along with Malala recovered from their injuries and are now college students in Wells. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the redwood forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports New York Mayor Bill de Blasio denied that the city had toughened its policing strategy in response to the riots in Baltimore after some lawmakers accused the city's police force of overly aggressive tactics in its handling of protest on Wednesday night. During a series of marches across Manhattan to protest the death of Freddie Gray, a man who suffered severe spinal injuries while in police custody in Baltimore, there were 143 arrests, mainly for obstructing traffic. De Blasio told a news conference, the strategic approach is exactly the same. We won't tolerate illegality. We won't tolerate disorder. We will not allow the few to undermine the honest efforts of the many to express their views. Some lawmakers had a different view. New York State Assemblyman Michael Blake, who participated in Wednesday's protest, which started from Union Square, said it was overly aggressive. Priscilla Gonzalez, a spokeswoman for Communities United for Police Reform, said in a statement, it is unacceptable that Mayor de Blasio refused to take responsibility for for the systemic lack of respect that the NYPD showed for the rights of peaceful protesters. Last year, New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton was criticized for allowing groups of protesters to disrupt traffic by marching down the middle of major thoroughfares without getting a permit beforehand. Those protests were about the deaths of Eric Garner on Staten Island and Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, who both died at the hands of police. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The couple told reporters this week that they routinely urge their son Patrick to devote all of his time and resources to his improv comedy education. We keep telling Patrick again and again that if you don't buckle down and start learning basic concepts like yes and and the Herald now, 
Nobody is going to take you seriously later uh, in life. He has to start thinking about this now. The parents explained that he should try to get as much out of his improv training as possible by attending improv jams, forming a few indie teams, and doing as much bar prob as possible to keep himself warm for those upcoming Herald auditions. The fact is, if Patrick were on stage with his fellow improvisers and one of them were to play, say, a super villain who's afraid of mice, Patrick wouldn't even be able to identify the game in that scene, let alone respond in a supportive way. I gotta say, I had this internship at a law firm, but I quit to do a character workshop and a musical elective. I think this is really gonna pay off for me in the long run. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Seditious Sirens. We are recording out of the beautiful Rebel Love Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire, this Friday, May 1st. And we'd like to open the show with a seditious thought. Life is full of obstacles. And though we all have different goals, it's safe to assume that happiness is everyone's shared result. But life is suffering. But suffering can be overcome by desire. And the only way to overcome desire is by life. But life can only be overcome by death. But if desire is eliminated from life, what is the reason for living? Nothing is real that is not eternal. This is the human condition. We long to be infinite, to be eternal, to matter. Our beliefs don't coincide with entropy our desire to escape the death sentence that ultimately makes us food for worms is so great that civilization has created religious ideas to protect us from nature our shortcomings just the total disappointment that life can be the realization of the dis absurd does not mean suicide as camel says it means revolt so Let's talk about religion, atheism, Wicca, and getting to a spiritual level with oneself. And together, maybe, we can reach a new level of consciousness. And I have brought my lovely and beautiful guest. Uh, Tila, can you introduce yourself for us? Hi. <laughs> my name is Tila. Oh. Yeah. And Hi, Tila. I'm happy to be on the show, finally. Uh, My lovely ladies here. She fits in so perfectly, don't you <laughs> right? think? She's I have just to so interrupt pretty. you guys. You guys sound so hot. Uh, so do you. <laughs> it's, uh, we, it's the new audio. It's not real. <laughs> 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 well, I brought Tila on the show uh, because we wanted to really talk about spirituality and uh, alternative religions. And Tila is a practicing Wicca. I don't, I don't really know the proper terminology. Yeah. Tell us a little about yourself, <laughs> Tila. Before you get into the uh, spiritual side, tell us uh, where, who you are, where you come from, uh, your yeah. family life, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so... <laughs> So right now I live in northern Vermont um, in the sticks, and that's where I was born and raised. Um, I'm hoping to move to beautiful Manch in August. So yeah, get your ass down here. I'm joining the FSB and moving 